All the tools you need to avoid a holiday debt hangover. I can't help you with the other kind of hangover, but we can when it comes to money. And if you've already spent too much, do not worry. We're going to share some tips to get you back on track. And later in our show, two moms will share their secrets for getting their kids' dream gifts without buying a single thing. It is true, you're not gonna believe it, but it is true. An Etsy trend expert, Diana Isom Johnson, is here with a great gift idea that will not break the bank. But first, we gotta start with the money rules. These are the words, the terms you need to know to get through this holiday season responsibly. Let's start with credit. What does it mean? It is not just a piece of plastic in your wallet. It is your ability to borrow money with the ex expectation that you're going to pay it back. During the holidays, credit cards can be a big draw for shoppers, but it's also how we overspend. We cannot forget that the key part of the definition is that you have to pay it back. You need to use your credit cards to your advantage, but you have to remember that you risk hurting your credit score and your overall financial health if you do not pay them back on time and in full. Next, this is a really important one, interest. If you are buying stuff with anything other than credit, i.e. like your credit cards, lenders are likely going to charge you a percentage of your purchase. You need to know exactly how much it's going to cost you to borrow that money that includes credit cards and those trendy things that you wanna buy, things you wanna buy now, oh my goodness, I found something on a flash sale. Pay attention, just because it's on sale doesn't mean it's a good deal if you're gonna be paying a huge amount in interest over the next few months. And finally, plan, plan, plan. I know you don't want to. We all love walking into a mall, checking out all those kiosks, but then we end up swiping, swiping, and overspending. We all do it. But take a deep breath. Make a plan that includes what you're buying, who you're buying it for, where you're getting it from, and most importantly, how you're going to pay for it. And speaking of planning, did you know that nearly one in three Americans expect to take on debt this holiday season. They gain weight and they gain debt. Nobody likes that. According to a survey from Credit Karma, Connecticut mom, Crystal Terry, she's one of those very people. I want you to watch her story. A typical holiday season for, for me is celebrating with my family. Looking forward to definitely Thanksgiving because then two weeks later I have my son's birthday. It's a busy couple of months for us, but I'm super pumped about it. I'm Crystal Terry. I live in Connecticut. I work in the financial services industry, and I have an adorable five-year-old, almost six-year-old son named Casey, and my husband, Tucker. We definitely tend to enjoy the holiday season for sure. Maybe a little too much sometimes. <laughs> I don't want to feel like I am penny pitching when it comes to gifts for my family and friends or just things that we want to get for around the house. But I also want to be cautious and walk away not thinking, oh my gosh, we spent so much money now we have to dig ourselves out of a debt hole to save again. Mostly for my son, if I see something I think he'll like, I just get it. So I don't really have a number of how many gifts he gets. He's a happy little boy on Christmas, that's for sure. But in regards to my, my immediate family, that adds up. And two years ago, we tried to do Secret Santa. You have a cap on your, their gift, which was great because you had a budget. But a lot of times people still went outside of that budget, like myself. And then last year, we went back to the traditional, everybody just buys stuff for everybody. We like to stay around $100 a person. Most times that go, we go over that, but that still obviously quickly adds up to $1,000 if we have 10 people. And that's the core group, not counting teachers, gifts and friends. And we try to, at least a couple of months in advance, like put money aside for, for the holidays. Sometimes that's spent a little bit beforehand on other things. I've done installments or, you know, the different pay plans um, to kind of like stretch things out if need be. I, I did that a little bit last year. Those were good and bad because, you know, at the time you feel like, oh, great, you're not spending as much during the holidays, but then, you know, it's still ongoing months and months after Christmas. I lost my father. He was um, my best friend. And we've lost a couple of people that have been close to us. So it's now, you know, we make a conscious effort to kind of see more people because you never know what's going to happen in the future. And the holiday times are, are a, great, a great way to do that. My husband loves to cook, but we also do like to host and make it a fun time and not skimp on things uh, when hosting. So that could act, easily add up, especially with prices going up now this year. It's super easy to spend, to go out of your budget. I can budget, you know, one or $200 and I come home with like $500 of things because 
I am more of an impulsive type. There are times we spent about $500, especially on, on larger, you know, holiday gatherings, because you have not only the menu that you're planning with the food, you have the drinks, which are very expensive. And when you like to host, our friends like to have some cocktails and some wines, like to have nice decor and go along with the holiday theme. And here and there you pick up things, but that adds up quickly too. So just excited to get with family and friends. And I want to be conscious of my spending because we do want to try eventually and save up to buy a house. We all want to have a lot of joy over the holiday, but Crystal, we are here to help you. More joy doesn't have to mean more spending. We're going to get strategic. We're going to solve for this. Coming up next, Crystal and retail whiz Kristen McGrath from Retail Me Not join us. And we're going to give Crystal a holiday shopping strategy that you will not want to miss. And later in the show, imagine, just imagine this, getting your holiday presents and decorations for free. We're going to introduce you to a community where you can do exactly that. On the Money Holiday Handbook returns right after the break. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to On The Money Holiday Handbook. It is easy to spend too much money during the holidays. And this year, with rising prices and supply chain issues, it is more important than ever to have strategies in place before you start your shopping. I want to bring in Kristen McGrath. She's the editor at Retail Me Not, and she's got some great ideas to control some of that holiday spending. And Crystal Terry is also back with us. Hello to both of you. Crystal, first of all, I want to go to your house for Christmas. I want your husband's cooking. I would like you to buy my children all of their gifts. You are a Christmas goddess. You put on an unbelievable spread, but help us understand what goes on behind that because you definitely have some challenges when it comes to spending. Do you have a plan of attack yet? Well, I hopefully would like to stay within a budget uh, this year, but also make sure that the gifts that I give everybody are thoughtful and everybody feels just as special. So that's one of the, the challenges that I'm, I'm going to be facing this year because, like I mentioned before, I typically overspend. So <laughs> I often say, especially as it relates to when we go out for the holidays, go on a cash diet. Bring whatever cash you have, and then at the end of that time at the mall when your wallet's empty, it's time to go home. But especially now that we're doing more and more online shopping, we are using credit cards. And we're now seeing these buy now, pay later options. Can you explain what this is and some tips around it? Sure. We've seen a proliferation of these buy now, um, pay later apps and programs. And so what they essentially allow you to do is um, make a purchase and then break that payment up over installments. Terms vary by program. But really, you know, in the moment, the money's a little less real because you're able to defer the costs and spread them out over time so it can be really easy to lose track. Okay, but what's the risk? Because unlike a credit card, if you don't pay on time, you could really get hit. Right. Um, these buy now, pay later programs have different terms. Some of them charge you late fees if you miss a payment. Um, some of them do have interest involved. And, you know, it's just like any form of credit. If you completely miss the boat and just stop paying, um, you can end up dealing with a collections agency, which hurts your credit in the long run. 
And it's horrible to have to deal with that. So we have a few weeks before Christmas. Many of us haven't started our holiday shopping. What are some tips you have to help us stay on budget? Right. Um, so I really liked what Crystal had said about thinking about putting money aside in advance. Um, so if you have if you have a number, you know how much money you have in the bank. That's the most important step. And from there, you need to make a really detailed itemized list. I like to do it the old fashioned way, pen to paper, um, come up with a spending limit for each person on your list and really itemize it. Everything from gifts to what you need to get the teacher, to what you need to get those dogs, um, to what you need to spend on the holiday meal. So you come up with a holistic number, itemized um, spending for each category um, so that you know how much you have and you, you know, it's hard to still not go over, but at least you're thinking about it deliberately um, in advance. We also need to prioritize our lists, but when we go to the stores and we see signs that say lowest price of the season, we often think it's on sale, let me jump on that. How important is it to research price history, right? Because just because something is on sale right now, if we look back a year from now, it may have been half the price. Right. You need to arm yourself with as much information as possible. So when you're making that list, um, especially when it comes to gifts, um, look exactly at what gifts you want to get and start looking up those items. Start seeing what the full price is. Um, use a price history tool. I like the one called Camel, Camel, Camel that lets you see over the past year what that item's been offered at. So that in the moment when you're seeing lowest price ever, you actually know if that's true and if you should jump on it. Um, because if you don't go in with a plan and with knowledge, uh, the holiday hype machine is going to give you a game plan and it's not gonna be a budget friendly one. Okay, impulse shopping though, that's what hurts me. When I'm at the store, I've got my list, I have an item in mind and they're out of it. That's when I start looking around. That's when let's say I'm near the counter or I'm walking by a kiosk in a mall and there's as seen on TV, as seen on TikTok and the next thing you know, I've spent hundreds of dollars. How do we manage our impulse shopping? Those are the budget busters. Right, and that's gonna be extra hard this year because of supply chain issues. The thing you might've planned to buy is gonna be sold out. And then what do you do in the moment? Um, so I like to shop online for that very reason. I mean, it might seem like it's online shopping is almost too easy, um, but it gives you the option of, oh, the thing is sold out on, on, on one website. Let me check Walmart, let me check Target, let me check Amazon, they might have it. So you can still get that item. It's also handy to have when you're making that budget some backup options too, so that you're not flailing trying to find some gift, any gift, you know, okay, here's my first choice, second choice, third choice, and they're all in my budget. Crystal, what do you most wanna know? Is it, um, do, you, do you think it's best to buy things now or wait for the typical Black Friday sales where everybody's going crazy? <laughs> Right. It's so confusing this year because retailers are starting to offer Black Friday sales earlier than ever. And I think right now it is smart, um, especially if there's a very popular item on your list or a big ticket item. It's smart to buy it now. If you've done your price research, you'll know a good deal when you see it. You can feel good about checking it off your list. Um, and then Black Friday and Cyber Monday can be the final round where you scratch everything else off your list, um, maybe pick up some holiday necessities. But I would say to avoid the stress, avoid the impulse buys and avoid too much hype, I think it's smart and strategic to start looking for deals now and retailers are certainly off. Them. So I just want to stay on that. So for those of us, I'm going to say I love shopping. I love retail. Is the best way to manage our shopping, do it early online. And then if we decide to venture out to the mall around Black Friday sales, we're just getting the odds and ends, not the big stuff. Sure. And, you know, I'm a big fan of some of those boring Black Friday buys. I mean, there's great deals on towels, pressure cookers, a lot of things you might need for the holidays and hosting. So if you really like the in-store Black Friday fun, you know, save it for, for those items that aren't going to break the bank, but that you can save big on um, if, if you actually need them. I like to go old school, the real sales, the day after Christmas. That's not very, that's not really in the holiday spirit though. Kristen, Crystal, thank you both so much. I really appreciate you joining us. We're gonna leave it there. But coming up next on our holiday handbook, we're gonna show you two ways to find the hottest gifts for the season. Two moms will show you how to buy nothing. And Etsy trend editor, Dana Isom Johnson, will stop by to share some must have gifts for the holiday season. We'll be right back. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There 
There's some late breaking news for our horses in the Iowa caucuses. By the man who never did. All right, it just did too. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to On The Money Holiday Handbook. Money is tight for many this holiday season, and even with Santa's help, it can be really stressful to buy presents for the people that you love. But what if you could get your Christmas gifts from your neighbors all for free? You actually can do this with Buy Nothing, an online community created to help people buy less and share more. I am Sarah Riblon, and I'm an admin of our local Buy Nothing group. I live in Plainfield, Illinois, with my husband, my eight-year-old daughter, and my dog. Hi, I'm Sophie, mother of two kids from North Carolina, and uh, I'm a member of Buy Nothing for two years. Buy Nothing is an online global community where people give and take stuff with their neighbors. I have done most of my Christmas shopping on the Buy Nothing page. There are so many things people post, especially around this time of year. Some groups do something called Buy Nothing Black Friday. On Black Friday, instead of running out to all the stores, you sit at home in your pajamas and scroll the page and people are posting and posting and posting gifts. My daughter, for Christmas, her largest gift from Santa has come from Buy Nothing the last few years. One time she got an American Girl dollhouse. The best part of that gift was we didn't have to put it together. It might have saved my marriage. It stands four feet tall, three or four feet wide. I'm sure it was a lot of money and we got it for absolutely free. One year she wanted a hot cocoa machine. I decided to put it out on Buy Nothing and someone said, hey, I have a Keurig, can you use that? And I said, well, of course, that's awesome. And she was over the moon. I am planning to use Buy Nothing for Christmas, for gifting things and for Christmas decoration that I can have new ones and give away my old ones. I asked Pokemon cards and I received two bags full of Pokemon cards for my daughter. She's really happy about it. And when she's done with Pokemon cards, I can always post and say, hey, I have tons of Pokemon cards and I'm ready to give it for free. It's really just neighbors helping neighbors. And when you give on Buy Nothing, you see who received it. And they will post a picture of their child opening this gift and you see the joy that it brings them and it just wants you to give more and more and more. The benefits go beyond that in reducing consumerism and the stress of the holidays, it's out. You know, you're shopping from your couch and then the carbon footprint of manufacturing goods, getting them to places and the shipping concerns this year, being worried that you might not even get what you're looking for. I've gifted clothes that my daughter's grown out of. I've gifted toys. I've gifted a television. The amount of giving is, is really endless.
This is absolutely amazing. I just cleaned out my basement. I've got a barely used Easy Bake Oven and a bunch of Christmas decorations I don't use anymore. I'm about to join this community. That is awesome. I know another big trend this season and, a lot, and over the last few years has been all about shopping small, shopping local. Many holiday shoppers are turning to their local small businesses, not just because they want to support their mom and pop shop, but because they're very worried about shipping delays, all these supply chain issues. So we all want to bring in our friend and small business expert, Etsy trend expert, Dana Isom Johnson. Dana, I'm so glad you're with us. I want to get to the trends of the season, but I do want to start with how do you help people manage? right we're not even into December yet I don't normally think about holiday yeah. shopping and now I'm panicked worrying about shipping delays supply chain issues what can we do you got to start right now it's all about starting early and really getting a head start because you want to beat those potential shipping delays and like you said now is a better time than ever to really support those local businesses because these local businesses are not faced with the same disruptions that those big box retailers are in terms of, of bringing in materials and manufacturing those goods. All right, well then let's talk trends. When I think about Etsy and last year, it feels like the biggest trend were mask sailor, sellers. Uh, people aren't necessarily <laughs> buying masks for one another uh, this Christmas and Hanukkah, but what are they buying? Yeah, okay, so let's kick it off with one of the hottest trends, which is all about an expanded color palette. So you're gonna see a lot of items, whether Christmas decor, holiday decor, or gifts that have these neons or pastels or outside the box colors of those traditional colors. On Etsy, we saw a 47% increase in searches for neons, pastels, or jewel tone colors. So with you in the studio, you have really beautiful pots and one thing to keep in these mind planters, is that all of these I love gifts them. Are I want to say I love yeah. them. They're mega bright. They're a little bit pricey, though. How do you stretch the cost? Well, here, here's a trick. Here's a trick. So that set of pots is a set of three for $80. So my tip to you is to make each of those pots an individual gift. Just add the uh -huh. greenery. Everyone loves a splash of greenery. That was another major trend, creating a plant oasis in your home. And everyone loves to receive that. So turn that into three gifts. I love that. I also love that it is a potted plant because when someone comes to my home with cut flowers, they're beautiful. But the next thing you know, then I'm scrambling yeah. around my attic looking for a vase and it's a big mess. Uh, I want to talk about these crayons right. because, listen, any kid anywhere loves crayons. These ones are pretty amazing. Talk to us about them. Oh, these are so wonderful and they align with that bright color trend as well. Now, what's so great about these is that they, they can be personalized. So you're going to work directly with the maker, get the name spelled out exactly how you want. You're increasing and hopefully encouraging creativity in children and, and asking them to put the screen aside for a bit and, and jump up that creativity. All right. I am not the greatest artist out there. I'm not a super crafter. However... During COVID, <laughs> DIY kits, crafting became a really big thing for my family. It's a way we would all do things together. We would even do the same crafts. We'd get the same kits with my sister's family and do it over Zoom. You've got some great ones this season. Exactly. And so this is continuing to be a very popular trend. Get this number, a 1,056% increase in searches for DIY kits. So this is a really wonderful way to bring the family together and do exactly like what you talked about. Do it together. So whether you're doing uh, paint your own ornaments or earring sets, whatever it may be, again, it's about spending that quality time together for the holiday season. Something that makes people always feel special is if you put a lot of effort in, and that comes with getting personalized yes. gift. We've seen different ways people can personalize a necklace, like with their child's name, but you found one that has a new take on the tradition. Absolutely, so this is a fresh take on that traditional name bar necklace. Now a lot of sellers we're seeing will engrave the name throughout the entire necklace, so you can get three different Ooh. names, and again, it is the best because it is the ultimate level of personalization. Of course, you're adding the name, but then you're also choosing the finish, whether that be rose gold, gold, silver, and then you're also selecting the, the necklace length. So you're really customizing at every step. All right, you also found a way to honor the most special member of a family, the family pet. <laughs> 
Absolutely. So we saw so many people uh, bringing fur babies into their homes over the pandemic. And so getting a custom portrait made is the absolute best way to add them to the family or gift to a family member who recently added this special member to their family. Now, here's what makes mm. this item so great. It, it looks great. to me that that special family member on your right might be the cutest dog I've ever seen. Can we see that one? Well, you know what? I, I, you, you may be a little biased because to I may me, be. that in fact is Skipper Dipper, my <laughs> own family dog. That's right. That's right. Here's what's great about this item, though. It's what I call a printable. So you're going to work directly with the maker, send them an image of the pet. They're going to create that custom drawing, and then guess what? You don't even have to you leave your home. You're going to print it right from your home, and then you can frame it and hang it right from the comfort of your home. My goodness, that could be hanging above the fireplace <laughs> by Christmas Eve. Uh, Dana, thank you so That's much. Right. You definitely got us more prepared, a little smarter, and definitely more excited for shopping this holiday season. I appreciate it. Happy holidays. You too. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the headlines that are impacting your wallet. That's right after this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Oh, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to On The Money. Here's the news you need to know from the business world and what it means for your wallet. To keep up with all the holiday shopping madness, companies are rushing to find workers to keep up with higher demand this season. The National Retail Federation expects retailers will be hiring between 500,000 and 665,000 seasonal workers just to keep the shelves stocked. Mail carriers, UPS, FedEx, and the Postal Service, they're adding a combined 230,000 workers to keep packages is moving this year. Employers are also offering higher pay benefits and even hundreds of thousands of dollars in signing bonuses to entice workers onto their payroll. So if you've got some extra time, you might want to think about a seasonal job. And this one is majorly important. Open enrollment. It's underway for 2022 insurance coverage. So if you're looking for health care next year, if you want to change it, now is the time to check with your employer or register via healthcare.gov. And if you still have money left in your FSA, that's your flexible spending account, you need to focus on that now because at the end of the year, you will lose it. Figure out what you still need. Is it glasses? Is it pharmacy items? Buy it now before the end of the year. Use it or lose it. That is it for our holiday handbook. I'm Stephanie Rule. Thank you so much for joining us. For more holiday advice from shopping deals to recipes and tips for gathering safely this year, go to today.com slash holiday handbook. I'll see you again soon.
Hello! <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? Not from you. <laughs> How are you? Good, nice to see you. I mean, this day and this garden is just for you. How beautiful is it up here? Incredible. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on. Let's talk Legos. Legos. <laughs> Legos. <laughs> Was that hello, like, sounded deep enough for it to be belly and button talk, or not really? You have to kind of bring it down from here. OK. You have to hello. go. Hello. No, 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 not <laughs> your hand. Hello. hello. And then you go up high. Oh, OK. You start low and go high. Hello. Yeah. No, no. Hey. Hello. 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 <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's just a stupid thing. Well, I'm sure it's stupid. <laughs> It's not about me, is it? No. Not at all. No, me. All right. You know this girl, Claire, I'm seeing? Yeah. Well, he and I started joking that when she falls asleep, her stomach stays awake all night and talks to me. How's it talking? Well, the belly button's like a mouth. I'm bored. OK, so you've played a lot of different Jerry's. Do you know what I mean? You've had the big puffy sleeve Jerry. Yes, I've, on the Today Show. Yes. We debuted the puffy shirt on the Today Show with Brian Gumbel. That is a very, very unusual shirt you have on. You know, uh, they're all kind of, kind of puffed up. Yeah, it's a puffy shirt. <laughs> you look kind of like a pirate. <laughs> yeah, like a pirate. Anyway, uh, you know, we're hoping to um, raise enough money with the, you know, you know, with this. Look, I'm sorry. It is just a very unusual shirt. It could be kind of a whole new look for you. You know, you could put a, a patch over an eye. You could kind of like be the pirate comedian. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've yeah. had some iconic looks. Yeah. What made you think, OK, it's time naturally to be a Lego, Jerry? Well, who doesn't want to be a Lego? It's Lego Seinfeld. He's blocky. He's stoppy. He has sea hands. What are we selling here? <laughs> Lego, the reason people love Lego is because they it clicks together. And once it clicks, it fits. It's tight. And it makes sense. Yes. And the world doesn't make sense. But Lego, you can, you can order the universe with Lego. You can make sense of something. Yeah. If you follow the instructions and you complete the model, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I have three little kids. Have you ever stepped on a Lego in the middle of the night? It's painful, yeah. It's not a great thing. You're no. right that they make sense. There's there's moments where you want to throw them, though. Yeah. Does that, is fun that, to throw, too. Is that sort of makes is that sort of you? You know, they're <laughs> like, Jerry, you make sense, but there's moments where you're like, no, that I've work. never stepped on a Lego, but that does seem like a killer. OK, in this short, you say, but I don't want to be a Lego. <laughs> right. But you actually wanted to be a Lego. You, this was I your did, idea. Yeah. How, what was the genesis? Uh, the genesis was Lego made a model of my TV show set. And Netflix bought the TV show and wanted to do a promo. And I went, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why can't I be a Lego? And then I, and then I really wanted to do the line again. I don't want to be a pirate. But I, yeah, but I don't want to be a Lego. But I don't want to be a Lego. I know. I, somehow that that is a hard octave to match. You know, there's a whininess to that that's really hard to do. It's it, these are some of the little subtle things of comedy that are very important. So what did your wife and kids think when you told them you were turning into? They loved it. I got the idea from my son, who was wanted to build his last Lego. He's 16. He, thinks, he said, you know, I think I got one more Lego left in me. <laughs> one more. I go, why don't you do the set from my TV show? We were walking along and I went, oh, that's the promo. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make Netflix shrink me down. <laughs> shrink you down and pour actual Lego cereal yes. into your mouth. There, you, the set is incredible. It's exactly like it's your amazing. set. Tell me some of the details you love. I, I love the couch and I love the refrigerator and the stove. This phone is. And I love wearing the costume. Some of those bits, like you know, when I skate out in the yes. end, that took an hour and a half oh. of moving an inch at a time. And when I sit down on the couch, that took an hour and a half. The stop motion is not done with humans. Yeah. It's done with props. You know, the last person to do it was Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer. Oh, really? Yes. Humans don't do stop motion. We do it with toys and props. <laughs> you don't ask a person to do this. And now this. 
<laughs> and now this, you know. But the fact that, so first of all, somebody told me about this and I thought like, no, no, he, Jerry Seinfeld's not becoming a Lego. Yeah. <laughs> and then they told me you shot it last week. Yeah, last week. So how much fun was it? There was a lot of laughter. It was insane. <laughs> we, it was just this crazy, everybody, we had to hire an animation company to do the stop motion because I wanted it to be stop motion. And then to build that set, that was all custom made out of foam and then paint and then the plastic finish to make it shiny. I mean, we worked so hard on it. It was so much fun. I bet it was. Yeah. So the amazing Brian Cranston, who is a Tony winner, an Emmy winner, yeah. Oscar nominated. Yeah. You call him on the phone and you're like, hey, you want to be a Lego? He's not a well, Lego. Well, he's an announcer. He's an announcer. Coming this fall to Netflix. 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 Net 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 Seinfeld. 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 You call him on the phone and say, want to be in a Lego short? Yeah. And his response was? Love to. He says, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but I trust you. That's what he said. Did you notice the little dentist chair at the end? I sure did. That's Was that little, a nod uh, to him? I think that's a cookie, what we call a cookie. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe that would have been a stranger conversation, but it was just pretty basic. Want to be in a Lego short? Let's if, do it. If you're a comedy person, which Brian is, even though he's done a lot of yes. drama, and someone gives you a crazy idea, you go, yeah, that sounds crazy. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. So the last couple years, people have been at home on their couches. Right. Is this, is there like a lot of creativity spurring up in you? Is that why things like this are happening or not really? Maybe, I didn't think about that, but maybe. I, I personally have a, a, feel like I really need to have some fun. I really need to make fun things for people. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do this. I go, this is just fun and silly. And I don't see enough of that. Yeah. I like that. It, does, it will make people laugh for yeah. sure. So Netflix has picked up all of these episodes. Yes. Do you think the world's ready? I don't know. <laughs> they weren't when we started back in 89, that's for sure. It took a number of years before people said, what are, what are they talking about? How do they talk? I know that's kind of interesting. So it didn't catch on right away? No, it took four years. The first four years of the show, it was Poorly received, very poorly received. That's forgotten now. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so how did you all have the patience just to wait it through? Well, um, in those days on television, if you got a good demo, yeah. uh, the advertisers wanted to be on your show. So even though we were not good, <laughs> we got a certain audience that was buying like BMWs. So that kept us on the air. Um, I, tell me about being a Lego, the, transforming. It did not look comfortable, I have to tell you. It was okay. I, I was fine with it. I just wanted to be it so bad. <laughs> I wanted to be in the toy. Seems like, you know, so if, it you bought, if you bought that toy, yeah, 
and you could get me shrunk yes. down in it. Wouldn't that be the ultimate? I'd be very into having you as a Lego, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I, I was worried about you because it looked like oh. there was a little bit of a wedgie in this area. Yeah, yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah, there's lots of... Just issues. between you and me, we want... There, was a there a little issues, wedgie? A lot of issues below the waist. It looks yeah. like it. Yeah. I mean, that, that round area. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Um, I loved Netflix's press release. It was brilliant. Did you read it? The new show thing? Yeah. Yeah. It said, Netflix will launch 180 episodes of a situational comedy called Seinfeld, created by rising New York comedian Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, who wrote for Saturday Night Live for a single season. That's right. So how did you feel about, I mean, the fact that they would take a chance on a young New Yorker just like you, did that feel good? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did. And to make that many shows, not knowing if anyone was gonna like it, it was quite a gamble. It really yeah. was, thank you, Netflix. Yeah. Sitting here with this beautiful view in Rockefeller Center, New York's been through a lot. Yes. You wrote a really beautiful article that I feel like everybody posted online. Um, what does it feel like to be here on this day, beautiful fall day in a city that you love so much? I am uh, humbly uh, proud of uh, that I stuck up for my town. Yeah. I, I just love this town. Yeah. And you know, I, I know, I grew up you know, all around here, so you, you know the people, you know what they're made of. You know, you, you're, not, you're not getting rid of this. <laughs> There is nothing like this anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a resilience. To yes, it, right? yes. And on a day like this, there's nowhere better to be. No, no. It has a, a New York on a beautiful day is really magical. It really is. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm just wondering, as a Lego, could could Elaine do her dance? Like, what would that look like? There'd be like? a lot of clicking, and yeah. clacking. Kind yeah. of like in in the knee area. Yeah, the, some of the plastic might crack. Now, does a Lego have a belly button? No. No, so, just mean, shirt buttons. How would you talk from your belly button? That'd be a really hard thing. Well, we're not going to do the whole series. I have, <laughs> okay, I have to not. tell you the truth. <laughs> it was really just a joke. Oh, you're not do I no. thought you were doing the whole series as a Lego. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the way it looks. But no, we couldn't do it. Too expensive, right? Yeah, yeah. These days. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The biggest grievance of 2021 so far. And you don't have to have one if you don't want one. Oh, do I've got tons. <laughs> um, sounds like a plan. That's because it is a plan. That's what the sound was. Just tell me what time you want to meet. Stop saying the thing sounds like a plan. You know what? Actually, Hoda and I, are, and, and actually Savannah, we're in a fight over the word literally. 
because we think oh, it's overused. Way overused. Are you on my side? Totally. They're like, totally well, literally, go too, it's, by literally it's freezing out here. I'm yeah. like, no, it's just cold. It's just freezing. If it was literally freezing, yeah. you would have frostbite. That's right. Okay, so you want to tell Hoda that you're on my side? I'm on Jenna's side, Hoda. Stop with the literally. Thank you. It's not a book <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, if we want to talk literal, yeah. let's go to talk Jane Austen. You yeah. know what I mean? You go away from New York for a couple months. What's the first thing you do when you come back? Just walk. A walk in New York is like reading a novel. The, you see snippets of, you know what I love? That people yap on the phone out loud. <laughs> I love hearing half a conversation. I you do know? too. I, it's fun, right? I yeah. don't find it annoying. No, I, really I don't like find it. it annoying. In fact, when we go to restaurants, I'm like, honey, they're getting divorced. He's like, can you pay attention to me? Yeah. It's hard not to. Musical artist that you listen to that would surprise some people. Do you like music? I love music. That would surprise some people. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would surprise them. I really love John Denver. That's not a surprise. I, don't I think. love uh, America. I love the band America. I, and I really love uh, Malo, who they had a song called Suavecito, which is my favorite song. <laughs> is it really? Suavecito. Can you sing a little bit of Suavecito mm. to me? La, 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 <laughs> la, la, la. Sound familiar? No. You know this song, Jenna, you know Suavecito? this song. Suavecito? You know Suavecito. You don't know that you know it. It's one of the greatest Latin Suavecito. Song. Yeah. Is that it? No. I'm thinking Despes Despacito. It's not Despacito. Do you know Despacito by yes. the Bieber? Despacito no, no. es Suavecito. <laughs> okay. okay. It's um, diferente. So I felt like I needed to say, hello. Is that better? Right. No. Is it what? Was that better? Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Is that, what's the number one Seinfeld line that people yell at you when you're walking the streets? Um, they yell, um, Where's Kramer a lot? I don't know why I'm expected to be with him at all times. They yell, where's Kramer? What do you say? I go, he's not real. <laughs> he's not real. Um, uh, this is sort of a strange one, but last picture you took on your iPhone. I hope, it, it, only if it's, in a, if it's not appropriate. It's always, uh, of course, I don't do anything okay. not appropriate. Okay, the last picture I took, well, it's a, it's a small story. Okay, we've got the time, as long okay. as you do. I like, I like, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. I like funny uh, pet stuff. Yeah, and I, saw I know you do. I saw a bulldog <laughs> riding a skateboard. Uh, and it was so cute, and I was so fascinated. And I just thought, that they just showed how this bulldog, he just loves his skateboard, he loves it. And I go, that, that's, that explains so much of life right there. He just, he just loves it. There's no reason why. No one will ever understand why. He loves that skateboard. So later on that day, I was walking from 69th in New York to Columbus and 81st. And as I was getting up to Columbus on 81st, I saw a bulldog no. and a woman, same day, a woman carrying his skateboard. Was it the same bulldog? No. And did you take a picture yes. of it? Yes. And did you send it to your wife? No. Okay. I thought maybe you'd share it. I know she likes funny pet I videos, too. I told the story. The picture wasn't great. <laughs> a little blurry. Yeah, but it was amazing. So I just have to go back to the fact that you like funny pet videos. Do you find comfort in them, humor? Or what is it? I don't, uh, I don't really have a pet. I don't really. I know you we, do have a pet. I you know, have Javier. It's, I'm, I'm not. It's not. He, he and I have no real relationship. Wait, that's, your wife is going to take real offense to this. No, it's her thing. You don't like cats? They're okay. <laughs> but Javier is marrying my sister's cat. That's fine. You're not gonna be at the wedding? I guess I will. <laughs> you don't really like a cat. I, I like that my wife enjoys it. Okay. And when he gets lost, I go looking for him. Well, that, Javier does not go outside on the streets of New York, does he? No, but out, we have a house on Long okay. Island, and sometimes he will escape. Okay, well, that's nice. So you yeah. do secretly love the cat? Okay, secretly. Okay, I thought Let's so. Let's keep it a secret. All right, don't tell anybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Oh. What's the best thing about being this age? 
you have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! You want bread? Three dollars! No soup for you! How would I describe the soup Nazi? Is I just thought he was a very militant food vendor who, who didn't take crap from anybody and uh, ruled his his soup station with an iron fist. And I, I even went into the original audition in an army uniform with a beret. So I looked like uh, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> You're pushing your luck, little man. Sheila! Hey! Uh-oh. What is this? You're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line! My favorite line is the kissing line, and uh, I was doing a, a thing for Sony once called the Seinfeld Food Truck, where we were going to different locations, and for two hours people would line up and get treats. And uh, I very seldom get the chance to say that line, and there was one couple in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who were brave enough to stand there and start making out in front of me, and I finally got to say, like, you're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line! The main thing is to keep the line moving. Okay, so you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So right. The step to the left part, it, it's, it's been made fun of so often. I've had people come up to me and like stand like that and step to the left. And uh, going to the actual real soup stand, I finally found out that the reason you step to the left is the menu board is to your right. So if you order and stay there, no one else could see the menu. So there actually is method to the madness. I actually say no soup for you a lot these days, but uh, in the first like three years after the episode, I refused to say it. I wouldn't say it for anybody. I, uh, when I was nominated for the Emmy, I had interviews with a, a few big TV shows and I refused to say it for them because I just thought I'd sound like a bad water cooler impression of myself out of context. And then when we shot the finale, um, the very first scene we shot was actually a silent scene at this bed and breakfast where I take Poppy's soup bowl away from him because he motions that he wants salt and pepper. <laughs> and uh, Jerry and Larry David decided that I should say No Soup For You out loud, even though you weren't going to hear it in the show, which absolutely terrorized me but I said it and as we walked away from that scene Larry David walked over to me and he goes hey man you say it the same way you said it three years ago so ever since then it's like a knee jerk there was um, a lady named Marcia who was in the extra pool and they had built the soup stand a little longer than they planned so for me to go to the cash register and back to serve the soup was killing the timing of the lines. It was just taking too long. So they called this girl out from the extra pool because she looked like she would be working in, in my stand. And uh, her name was Marcia. And she, at a moment's notice, did that thing where she pulls the bag away from George and hands him the money back. It actually got uh, more laughs than anything I did. And to this day, 
When I see that scene over and over again, I laugh at her timing. The guy who runs the place is a little temperamental, especially about the ordering procedure. He's secretly referred to as the soup Nazi. Working with that cast was just amazing. Jason Alexander was calling me Lat, which is the New York shortening of Larry. There's Lawrence, Larry, Lat, but that's New York. And he was calling me that within about an hour of me being on the set. Um, Julia was incredible because if I made her laugh, she would totally break up and she'd grab my hand and go, you're so funny. So they were so welcoming. But the most amazing story to me is Jerry himself because um, I've dealt with a lot of producers and directors in the world of theater, TV, film, everything. I've done some directing myself and I know what that's like. But I've never worked with um, a, a director and producer who had less ego than Jerry Seinfeld. Medium crab bisque. When I did the callback, I did the six scenes that the Soup Nazi has, and he laughed a lot. It was great. It was, he was laughing too much, actually. And then he had me do it again, and he said, you know, I don't understand why the character is so mean. Could you, you know, kind of do it again and give it some of this, be a little nicer sometimes, which I did horribly. I don't think he laughed once. And I thought for sure that was, you know, the death nail about the character. I wasn't going to get it. But I did get it. And as soon as I walked onto the soundstage, Jerry B. lined over to me and he said, you know what, man, forget about the direction I gave you. Just do what you did when you walked in. The meaner, the funnier, I guess. And I was just astounded by his lack of wanting to be right, which almost every other director and producer uh, has. I could go a long time without being recognized, but every once in a while, somebody will say to me, you know, has anybody ever told you you look like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld? And depending on if I have time to talk about it, you know, because sometimes I, like I'm in a rush or something, so I'll just say like, yeah, I get that a lot. And other times, you know, I, I get to go like, yeah, I was him. You know, and it's, it's always fun because Seinfeld fans uh, range from 13 years old to, to 83 years old, you know. A couple of times I've been somewhere, like on the subway or somewhere where it's crowded and people can't really see me. And I will actually hear somebody say to somebody else, you know, no soup for you. And I'm, I'm actually like, you know, 10 people away and they don't even know that I'm there, but I hear people say it. I actually wrote a book called Confessions of a Soup Nazi, an adventure in acting and cooking, uh, which is part cookbook, part memoirs of, you know, 30, 40 years of being an actor. But the reason I wrote it is because I get so many people that come up to me and they go, you know, you were so great on Seinfeld. Did you ever do any other acting after that? So, uh, I, but I get all kinds of stuff. I get people that, that think I'm really Al Yegane and that's, you know, I, I was at your soup stand. I visited New York and I was at your soup stand and, you know, it was closed. When do you plan on reopening? And I have so much fun with going like, I'm, I'm an actor. It's not my soup stand. It's, you know. The funniest thing about how my life has changed after Seinfeld is I had no idea that the life I had was gone forever. Not a moment goes by in my life where it doesn't have something to do with having been the soup Nazi, really an hour goes by and something happens where that takes over my life again. So it's, it's a whole new existence. Where do I think the soup Nazi would be now? Well, then I have to pitch my idea for a spinoff because, see, I, I see a food court in Manhattan where the soup Nazi, Babu, and Poppy are all in a row with their prospective little stands and Jackie Childs comes in there every day for lunch and we vie for his business, of course. You know, whatever the storylines are about uh, or whatever actually the events that happen in every episode, it really boils down to the way people treat each other. You know, they didn't treat people very well. You got to admit that. I know people loved, you know, Jerry, George, Elaine and Kramer, but they were horrible. They treated people badly, and they always got their comeuppance for treating people badly. So I guess in the end, that's such a generational and universal, never-ending idea is 
you treat people a certain way and you get back the way, you know, it's like the golden rule, you know, you get back what you give. And that's really what the show is about in the end. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Thanksgiving is just around the corner, so today we're cooking up an all-star feast. And making our favorite takes on classic holiday dishes. I'm kicking things off with a juicy marinated turkey and my favorite turkey tips. And I'll whip up my favorite stuffing made with sourdough and challah. And it just wouldn't be Thanksgiving without the perfect sweet potato pie. I'm Jocelyn Delk Adams. I'm Jay Cohen. And I'm Alejandra Ramos. And this is Today Food All Stars. Let's get cooking. This turkey recipe is based on how my mom made our family's Thanksgiving turkey. Growing up Puerto Rican, our main attraction at holiday dinners was always pork. But one year, my mom decided to use that same citrusy marinade for turkey. And trust me, it works. Marinating can help keep a large bird nice and juicy, even through the long cook time. All right, so the star of this dish is the marinade. It's super simple. All we have to do is add every single one of our ingredients and let the blender do its work. We're gonna start off with an onion, and all we're gonna do here is quarter it and peel it. Really, really simple. Next up, I'm using a red bell pepper. You can swap in green, orange, or whatever you'd like. Now it's time for the garlic. This wouldn't be a Puerto Rican recipe without a lot of garlic. So we've got 16 cloves. Now we're gonna add a cup of olive oil, and that is gonna be enough to kind of get us started. And let it go. All right, that's already looking fantastic. Matches my dress. We're gonna add a little bit of cilantro. Now we're gonna add a little bit of that citrus. So for this, my mom growing up would use Seville oranges, which are also known as sour oranges, but they can be a little bit hard to find. So an easy swap is to just use two regular oranges and then the juice of one lemon. That way you get that beautiful tart citrus juice. Now we're gonna add some fresh lemon juice to it. All right, let's get that going again. We're gonna add some smoked Spanish paprika to this. It gives the bird a gorgeous color after it's roasted. That's what I love. We're also gonna do some black pepper and then salt. Always so key, this is what dials up the intensity of flavors. A quarter cup of kosher salt. I know, I know that sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's what you need for this bird. Amazing, how beautiful is that? So our marinade's done, gonna let that hang out for a little bit and move on to making our herb butter. So for this, we're using fresh oregano and thyme, but of course you can use any kind of herbs that you want. So for this, we're using a softened salted butter, which makes it really easy to incorporate those fresh herbs. You just kind of want to mix it up, mash the herbs in so it's nice and evenly distributed. And because you know I love my paprika, we're gonna add one tablespoon of it. This is gonna add flavor, but also color. Perfect. Okay, so now that the butter is prepped, it's time to bring out the guest of honor, our turkey. When you get a turkey at the store, it's usually wrapped up in plastic. You wanna get rid of that. For this, I like to use just some paper towel, just to pat it dry, get rid of any juices that are on the turkey. Some turkeys come with giblets and the turkey neck inside, so you wanna make sure you check. If it is there, you can just take that all out. Now we're gonna add the herb butter that we made. And I just like to go a little bit at a time, kinda slip it in there, and then use your hands to press it in and around that breast. Mm -hmm. 
I also like to add a little bit of the herb butter inside the cavity. Just kind of spread it around in there. The more butter, the more flavor. And this is the easiest part. All you have to do is pour that beautiful creamy marinade right over the bird. I like to do this on a rimmed sheet pan so that it holds any kind of overflow. All right. That is one beautifully marinated bird. Happy Puerto Rican Thanksgiving. <laughs> now I'm gonna prep a few vegetables to stuff inside the turkey cavity. This is gonna add a lot of flavor as the turkey roasts. So for this, I'm using an onion, and all we're gonna do is quarter it. Don't worry about peeling. This is really just about the aroma. Take the garlic, and we're just gonna cut it right along the side like this, just to kind of release the garlickiness. I've got one orange to reflect those delicious citrus flavors in our marinade, and one lemon. So what we're gonna do now is just stuff all of this inside the bird. Just get as much as you can in there. What's great too is those citrus fruits, as they cook, the juices will kind of come out. So fantastic. Now just to kind of keep things under control as it cooks, keep things decent, we're gonna tie the legs a little bit. And this isn't a fancy truss, that's not my jam. I like to keep it really simple. And our final step before we put the bird in the oven is to add some broth and some fun flavors to the base of our roasting pan. I'm gonna do about three cups of broth, and you can use any kind that you want, chicken, turkey, beef, whatever you have, and some orange juice to, again, kind of pick up those beautiful citrus flavors in the marinade. Now we're gonna add some fresh herbs. Just gonna drop it in. This will sort of infuse that broth as it cooks, so it's like it's gonna have this beautiful herbal steam bath. A little aromatherapy for your turkey. Some fresh oregano and a few bay leaves. So now we're gonna cover our bird with some foil before it goes into the oven, just to kind of keep things nice and hot inside. We are gonna roast this turkey at 325 degrees for a total of four and a half hours. About halfway through, take the foil off and add another cup or two of broth to that roasting pan. Time to roast the turkey. <laughs> All right, so our turkey is fully roasted. I've got one little finishing touch. I like to glaze my turkey with some guava jam. This is Puerto Rican. We're going with those delicious tropical flavors, and guava is one of my favorites. If you can't find guava jam, you can always use something like apricot or even raspberry. For this, I'm using a pastry brush. So you just dip it in and paint. Oh, guava is one of my favorite flavors. This is like the smell of home to me. I'm a sucker for that savory sweet combo. That looks amazing. Now to set the glaze, we're gonna pop it back under the broiler for just about three to five minutes, just until it's set. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses by the man who never did. All right, it just made it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. 
grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. All right, so I always bring the beautiful bird out to the table on a platter, but after we say grace, I bring it back into the kitchen because nobody wants to carve a turkey on the table. You really want to be able to do it in the kitchen where you can have much more control over the bird. I like to start with the breast, and I let the breastbone in the center be my guide, cutting slightly either to the left or to the right to get that beautiful piece of the turkey breast out. And so you just sort of run your knife along and then use your hands to pull the meat as you cut. Once you hit a point where you can't go any further, you can come in from the side and then pull that breast meat off. So you can just cut it against the grain on the bias, just kind of going in into beautiful little slices. So I always like to get a little bit of the skin with the meat. So good. I'm getting all of those flavors in that marinade, everything I want in my Thanksgiving turkey. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun, bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did so. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Growing up, one of the best things my mother would make at Thanksgiving was her stuffing. The only thing was she would use like whole wheat sandwich bread, which is kind of basic. I, I still love you, mom. I adore your stuffing, but I wanted to kick it up a notch by using some more flavorful breads. The only thing I did keep was her secret ingredient, which is apples. It had such a gorgeous sweetness. Honestly, the stuffing isn't just great for Thanksgiving. You can make it any time of year. So let's get started with our bread. I love sourdough because it adds really great flavor and structure. I think a key part that you need to know when you're making stuffing is the balance of breads. I'm using something with some structure and something that's a little bit softer and uh, more buttery. You want that combo of both because no one likes mushy stuffing. So I'm slicing this into one inch kind of thick planks. And then from there, you don't have to get so precious. You just wanna take your slices and then start to tear it into one inch pieces. Just like that. Don't get crazy, it's gonna be great. I have two sheet pans here, and we're just going to spread them out. A Little bit of an arm workout. And this is actually one of the parts of the recipe that I would always help my mother make growing up. Challah is my favorite bread ever. It's super soft, super luxurious. It's gonna add so much richness to your stuffing. 
We have our sourdough challah ready to go into the oven. Preheated oven, 300 degrees. We're just gonna bake it for about 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want dry, dry. We just want it to be like on its way to becoming croutons. Now let's chat vegetables. We have three leeks here. Alliums are the base of almost any recipe, but for Thanksgiving, I find that leeks really give that Thanksgiving vibe you're looking for. They're a lot more delicate in flavor. Here's the deal with leeks. You gotta clean them really well. The easiest way to do that, took off the tops, we're gonna take off the bottoms, and now we're just going to slice them lengthwise. Reveal these beautiful layers. This is where all the sand and dirt gets caught. I'm gonna pop it into a bowl of water. And you just wanna go through and start to get it nice and clean. We're just going to thinly slice these. Think about like quarter inch slices. Put it to the side and what that means is we're going to use two carrots, two parsnips, and two stalks of celery. We really want nice like little bite size. Not too small, not too big. I'm looking for a nice small dice. And we're gonna start to build this all in one bowl. Parsnips. They are one of my favorite vegetables. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite ingredients to use in all of fall because it's super cozy. It's got that real nice depth of earthiness, a bit of sweetness. I've got herbs. I'm using thyme and sage today. We're adding just enough to perfume the whole dish. Everyone is very different in terms of their love of garlic. I'm not gonna lie to you, I've used eight before, 10. I love a lot of garlic, so you really can kind of do this to your own vibe. Last but not least, we're gonna do a half a cup of minced parsley. Just grab a nice handful and we're gonna run our knife through it. Now that our parsley is minced, the last thing we gotta do is chop up an apple. This is the one thing that my mother taught me and that is the secret to a great stuffing, apples. It's gonna add that perfect sweetness, that punch of fall. And the one thing I want you to know is that a honey crisp is the supreme variety. But what I love about these is they don't brown really quickly. It's gonna be nice and bright and still add all of that gorgeous sweetness. Our bread is toasted. I'm gonna let that cool slightly, but meanwhile, we're gonna start sauteing our veggies. Got a pan here over medium high heat. We are going to melt a full stick of butter. It's Thanksgiving, you gotta treat yourself. Definitely not a time for diet food. But butter, I mean, who doesn't love butter? Our butter is melted and bubbling. You do wanna make sure it's nice and hot. Not burning, not browning yet, but all melted. We're gonna add in our leeks. We're cooking down our leeks until they are nice and jammy. Sounds cute, but really it's a scientific term. They are going to release all of that beautiful sugar, which is gonna caramelize, and then it's gonna really look like jam at the end. I warned you that leeks are quintessential for the aromas of Thanksgiving. Butter, leeks, right now I already smell stuffing. I'm telling you, this is the most important thing, especially when your guests arrive. They're gonna smell your kitchen. It's gonna be so delicious. And we are going to keep going and add all of our chopped veggies. We have our carrots, parsnips, and celery. We're starting to cook these vegetables, but we're not looking to fully cook them. At this point, let's start seasoning. I think that too often people do not season as they go. It's such a crucial aspect to make sure that everything tastes seasoned and not salty. There really is something magical when like garlic hits a hot pan. And just like that, we're done with our cooking. Our vegetables are sauteed. I'm gonna let these cool down for a little bit. Why do you want them to cool down? It's all going back in the oven. That's because we're gonna be tossing this up with our hands. You do not want to burn yourself. Y'all ready to toss? It's the sound of crunchy bread. This is where the magic starts to happen. Let's go in with these veggies. Get every last bit of butter. We got our honey crisp apple, parsley, two cups of apple cider, and then two cups of vegetable stock. We got the stock, we got the vegetables. We need something to brighten this up. Cut through all of that richness, and I find that a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar is just gonna help add a little bit more balance. Half a cup of heavy cream, more richness, more custardy goodness. We're using three quarters of a cup of nuts. 
Last but not least, we have our eggs. You wanna be not delicate. We're not trying to obliterate the bread, but we do wanna to start to squeeze in all of these juices and get it kind of homogenous because really like, you don't want your stuffing to fall apart as you cut into it. I have a nine by 13 baking dish. You could use ceramic, you could use glass, you could use something that is a heirloom from your grandmother, anything that's going to hold this stuffing. I've bumped up the temperature to 375 and we're gonna bake this for about 50 to 60 minutes till it's beautifully golden, cook through, your whole kitchen's gonna smell even better. Now this is a stuffing. You have the nice little golden bits of crispy bread. The center is going to be nice and delicious and have soaked up all of the flavors of our vegetables, herbs. You got the apples. This is going to be a stuffing your family's gonna be talking about forever. Let's give it a try. I'm a big believer in the corner piece. You worked for this, you get it. Great bread to veggie ratio. Mm. It's like, if Thanksgiving was wrapped up into a bread pudding and really, 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 really given like a warm hug, it's this stuffing. I'm gonna keep eating this, but have a happy Thanksgiving. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is gonna get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. In my family, there is no Thanksgiving without a really good sweet potato pie. And I mean, it's so good, you might as well forget about the turkey. Dessert is what everyone wants anyway, am I right? I am taking a classic sweet potato pie to the next level because my recipe is full of indulgent fall flavors with an extra dose of everyone's favorite campfire treat. You can't have an amazing pie without an amazing crust. You gotta have that incredible, delicious graham cracker. So I'm gonna add this right into our food processor. And here's another thing. If you don't have these available, you can also buy the crumbs right in the grocery store, already ready. And you really wanna create some nice crumbs here, pretty fine. So just make sure you get these grinded all the way down. All right, so once you have it all grinded up, we're just gonna add this directly into a large mixing bowl. Get all our crumbs in there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of granulated sugar. And then we're just gonna whisk all of this together. We wanna make sure that we combine that sugar so you taste it in every single bite of this pie. And once you have a nice mix on that, we're gonna add some melted butter in here so we can actually start to bring this crust together. You can add whatever butter you have in the fridge, y'all, and I know you have plenty of butter for the holidays. And then I'm gonna use a spatula to start to combine everything. We wanna make sure that we moisten all of the graham crackers so it'll stick together and adhere really well. And you can sort of test it by just sort of sticking your finger in, and if you see it starts to actually stick together, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna dump this into a nine inch pie plate. And 
then this is when your hands get a little dirty. I'm gonna start to press this right into the bottom of the pan. And just work your hands around and make it as even as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't worry about messing it up. Once you have your pie crust set up in your pie plate, it's time to bake it off. You wanna make sure that this sets up and gets a nice golden color. Our pie crust is ready to go in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. Okay, so our gorgeous pie crust is out of the oven. And look at that golden color. I mean, it really just looks so beautiful. We're going to let this cool for a bit while we start working on our filling. So, of course, if you have sweet potatoes for the holidays, you can actually just bake them until soft and use that as a nice substitute as well. But for the ease of this recipe, you can just grab a can of this and it's gonna make your life so much easier. <laughs> so I'm gonna add this to our mixing bowl. Get all of that in there. And this is crucial because you do not want to use cold eggs for this recipe. You want to make sure that they are room temperature so your pie filling will set up perfectly. And we're also gonna add one egg yolk. There we go. And now we're gonna add some dark brown sugar and I'm just gonna scoop that in pack it down and add that right into our mixer as well. And finally, I'm going to add some vanilla extract. You wanna make sure you use the real thing. All right, and we're gonna mix that all together. First, I'm going to add in some cornstarch. And then I'm also going to add in some ground cinnamon. I'm also going to add in some salt. I wanna add some cloves, some nutmeg, and some ginger. And seriously, your kitchen is going to smell fantastic. All right, get that nice and mixed in. And then finally, we're going to add in some milk and also some heavy cream. Now this pie batter is going to seem a little bit thin, but do not worry about it. It's going to bake up like a dream. This is a super deep pie plate, so we're able to get all of the filling in here. I cranked the temperature up to 375 so we get this nice setting of the pie. And we're gonna bake this for about 50 to 55 minutes and then check on it about halfway through. Now our beautiful sweet potato pie is out of the oven and I've been letting it cool for about three hours. And now we're gonna get started on our chocolate ganache, which is going to go right on top of it. So I'm gonna start with our chocolate chips and I'm gonna add that into our mixing bowl. And then I also have some heavy whipping cream. And that's all it is, y'all, super easy. And this is going to go into our microwave so we can let that chocolate melt down. So now we're just gonna whisk all of the ingredients together until smooth. This smells amazing. So you wanna let this cool for maybe about 10 minutes and then you can add it to your pie. And then I'm just gonna take a tiny offset spatula and spread that around. Okay, we've got our graham crackers, we've got our chocolate, and now it's time for our marshmallows. I'm just gonna start adding these right to the top. Have fun with this. I just went with a super classic approach here. I went with just some jumbo marshmallows. I just love how organic and fun this feels, and you know, it really does seem like you're by the campfire. You can also just grab one right off of the pie and just eat it for a snack, you know, win-win. But not quite complete, because we've got to torch these babies. Now, kitchen torch. Most of you may not have this at home, but if you do want to invest in these, it's so much fun.
you put this on the table at Thanksgiving and people are going to just gasp. You just can't deny wanting a piece of this, right? Got that chocolate, with that mix of those fall spices and that filling, and then that graham cracker crust is just so perfectly crisp. This recipe is so perfect for Thanksgiving and I hope you have a wonderful one. Everybody, welcome to the Hoda Show. Uh, I'm so happy you're here today. It is a fine Monday morning, Monday post marathon in New York City. My gosh, like I don't think you could have made to order a better day. Um, if you if you haven't heard about it, the New York Marathon happened on Sunday. It was one of those like amazing days. A friend of mine ran it, and she said, "I don't know how to describe it to you except for this way." They sounded the cannon and they started playing New York, New York, and everyone just started running in a pack. She said there were people of all shapes, all sizes running. She said she looked up and the sky was beautiful and stunning blue. And she says as she was running, she was soaking it all in and there wasn't a place she went where people weren't cheering. And she said at one point she got really tired and it was mile 12 and she said, you know, she was saying, I got to stop. And she said she literally looked next to her and the girl, there was a girl on, cr on crutches with leg braces who was all by herself running that marathon, just like that. And she looked, she said there was another person pushing backwards on a wheelchair. And she said, and I said to myself, just go already, just go. And as she was running, she said it was one of the most sort of magical New York experiences she's ever had. And um, I texted a little bit with Willie Geist who finished his marathon and he was just talking about how like he he hasn't felt that kind of love so you saw you were out there mary weren't you yeah and what what was it like from wherever you were in brooklyn i was in brooklyn at the seven mile mark and it was it's always just really emotional and a loving experience yeah because you got to see people running and signs and all yep. kinds of people all shapes and sizes i mean there's something so incredible about it um knowing that you can do it like we interviewed a woman named um erin azar and she was a she was one of those TikTok moms who was like the she always called herself the least likely person to ever run a marathon and she kind of documented her marathon training on TikTok, and she was like i hate it look at me i feel fat and i can't go i have my period i can't go one mile and she would just document it as she went and so today after all the stops and starts with the marathon she came on our show she finished the marathon in I don't remember what it was six hours or something like that and she talked about like how magical it was there were signs and people cheering and screaming and once you get somewhere once you do that there must you must get that feeling of there's nothing you can't do I mean I remember when my mom finished her marathon when she was 60 I'll never forget it and I remembered watching her cross the finish line and I remember thinking to myself forever in my life I'll realize I can do anything because if she can do that I can do this whatever my this is and I remember thinking like wow that's really really cool so for everybody who ran in the New York City Marathon and now I think people who are who are thinking about it are going to jump in because I don't know what could have been better than what happened that day it was fun to watch and fun to watch everybody who finished I always wanted to do a documentary called the last 10 the last 10 people to cross the finish line like who would that wouldn't that be, be so good right. or maybe the last five if we don't have that much time <laughs> <laughs> Tens a lot. Let's call it the last five. But wouldn't that be great? The backstories, the training, the people who run through the dark when they're pulling up the finish line, the people who never quit, who ran through the streets. Wouldn't that be good? Really? Okay, if anyone uses that idea, just give me a little credit. Hey, I heard it. <laughs> Some lady on the, on the radio mentioned it. But anyway, I think it would be really cool. Um, if you're looking for things to read, there is a, a memoir that Oprah Winfrey describes as she calls it the best memoir she has ever read ever now oprah has read so many memoirs of so many people and she says that this one is the best one she has ever read and it is the will smith memoir it's called will and will smith put it all on the pages i mean 
He starts off in the book describing how when he was nine years old, he watched his dad strike his mom and his mom was on the floor and her nose was bleeding. And he said he felt like he couldn't protect her. And from that moment on, he felt like he was always the guy who couldn't protect the the women in his life even though he was nine and his parents should have been protecting him. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. And he said the only people he felt like in his life that he had not let down were his grandmother, Gigi, and his daughter, Willow. Those were the only two. To this day, those are the two women he has not let down. That's how he describes it. And it was really, really revelatory. I mean, he said he felt like a coward his whole life. Imagine this is like one of the biggest movie stars in the world who feels like a, who, who's to this day at, at times inside feels like a coward. And he said the first time he ever told his mother that he had witnessed her getting hit and falling on the ground and bleeding was eight weeks ago. He finally told her. It's like, you know, you look, we all sweep stuff under the rug. Like that's what families do. <laughs> Hey, nobody saw what Weird Uncle Bill did, right? He's He died. It's okay. No one bring it up again. Moving on. Like, you know how everybody does. Like, you take your old family secrets and bury them, and you think that, that that'll just be the case. But he said he brought it up to his mom, and his mom was shocked. Shocked because she didn't realize that it had... First of all, I don't even know if she realized that he had witnessed it, but that it affected him at this point in his life, at this point in his life, he's still carrying that. And the other thing he said he did, which I was like, are you kidding me? He took that big, thick book where he talks and writes about his whole life and his family and relationships that are difficult. He sat his family down over the course of a couple of weeks and read every single page out loud to them. He called it excruciating. (laughs) I mean, I'm already, I have like chills and panic right now. Reading out loud those words that you write to your, about your, because that's really how you see the world, you know. And um, I'm not through the book. It's a real thick book, but it looks really, really, really good. And Oprah was describing one of the reasons she loves it so much is because there are There are so many life lessons that go with it. Sometimes you tell your story and you hope someone grabs a lesson from it or you read someone's life and you're like, oh, I'm going to try to implement that. I think he clearly lays out life lessons from each chunk and it was difficult for him to put it all out there on the on the table and he did it. And this is like vulnerable times 10 because it's out there, it's in public and it's there for everyone to read. So his book is out uh, tomorrow is, I think, the drop date for, for the book, Will. Doesn't it sound, I mean, and what, what a, how cool is that to just say it? It's scary. Would you ever? What about your, all your, think about your worst family secret. Just everyone think about theirs for a second. The one, just, I'm not saying say it. I'm just saying think about it. You know, the one that you never told anybody and nobody ever tells anybody, but everybody has one. There's always one. Holly says she doesn't have any. I'm going to call your family members <laughs> extended <laughs> dial line. But anyway, I do think that it takes a special kind of courage. And, you know, I think, I think the, the way people used to think was bury it and it will go away. I think that's the way people dealt with everything. I mean, we swept everything under the carpet at our house. <laughs> Did you guys? Of course. Yeah. I mean, where else is it going to go? Out in the open? No. Why? When you can bury it and have it bubble up every holiday. Yeah. <laughs> there it is again. You don't, you're not even mentioning it. You're just, it just bubbles up and becomes something. You know, it's like, <laughs> though, and you know, I thought I'd bring that up since Thanksgiving's knocking at the door. Get a couple of drinkies and it all comes tumbling out. You know, that's how life goes. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. Private Panther and Beverage All right, it just fit too. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I am excited because my first guest is a guy who I just adore. Um, and I... Uh, you guys know uh, Tony Goldman from so many different things. We know him from Scandal. We know him from The House on the Left. We know him from, from Divergent. We know him from so many ways. Um, I was lucky because I still, one of my favorite little New York memories, I don't know if Tony will remember this, but I was eating um, eating dinner or lunch out at some Upper West Side Cafe and Tony walked by and I was like, oh my God, it was quite a moment. Hi, Tony. <laughs> I hold up. We all have our own little Tony moments. <laughs> How's everything? That that's my little Hoda moment. <laughs> <or one of them. laughs> no, are you where are you in New York or are you somewhere else? No, I'm, I'm actually in LA right now. Oh, um, we've been doing the uh, press junket for uh, King Richard this past weekend. So doing all okay, that. King Richard. I was just talking about Will Smith's uh, uh, autobiography or memoir that's out right now. King Richard is getting raves. Tell me about your role in that first of all. Yeah, it's a really great movie. I, I can't wait for people to see it. Um, for people who don't know, you know, it, it's the story of Venus and Serena Williams uh, as kids and how they got into tennis. And really, it's the story of their father, Richard Williams, who Will plays. Uh, and it, this incredible odyssey that I did not know. And I think a lot of people don't know the, the intimate story. of. And, and so I played a, a man named Paul Cohen, who was the first professional coach that Richard brought uh, Venus and Serena to, and and because there was only so far he could take them, um, and uh, you know Paul really professionalized their game, and uh, he and Richard had a really interesting relationship, and uh, it was just a blast to do. Yeah, and Will Smith talked about how he really embodied Richard. I mean, really embodied him. What was it like working with with Will on this one? Well, that was the thing, you know. I mean, as you know, Will is this mm -hmm. incredible life force, right? I mean, he's just the most joyous, uh, you know, energized human being <laughs> that you can imagine. And also so playful, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, like what fans think of Will, that's who Will is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what you get when you're just on set with them or in a meeting or, or whatever. And, and, but as we started to rehearse or you'd be working on a scene, Will would just slide in to Richard who mm -hmm. um, has that, a similar kind of uh, uh, life force, mm -hmm. you know, this sort of force of nature type personality, which Will Smith also has. But beyond that, there's this whole other <laughs> kind of speech pattern and physicality and kind of approach to the world that is not Will at all. So it was, um, it was kind of magical to watch and Will just kind of toggled back and forth mm. between the two and you almost didn't perceive it. And suddenly you're with Richard Williams. It was really, wow. it was really fun and exciting to work with him. I think it's cool. I mean, it must, I was just thinking about your profession in general. Uh, you do, you know, you, you embody all these different roles, but every year you're different. You're, probably the way you approach acting is a little bit different. What you do is different. How do you feel like you're different today than you were, I don't know, uh, 10 years ago as an, as just as an actor? Well, that's a great question. You know, yeah, it does keep evolving. And um, if you're going to get better at something, you have to always maintain a kind of student mind, you know, like, honestly, not with any modesty. I just, 
every time I do a job, I'm like, I'm not sure I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one might not work out. <laughs> so you have to kind of reinvent it every time. And I guess I've just gotten more comfortable with that as mm. I've gotten older and more experienced so that now I, I don't have a lot of anxiety about that. I understand that that's just a really positive part of the process, even though it it's uh, there's a certain amount of pressure that goes along mm -hmm. with not knowing if you're going to pull it off this time. Uh, so as you get more comfortable with that, then you actually get just a little bit more comfortable in your work. And I find I'm able to kind of uh, sort of get into the results a little bit faster because mm -hmm. I'm not stopping myself with my own anxiety. Like, oh, my God, what if this doesn't really you, you can you can let go of the fear a little bit more easily that we all experience. How scared were you when you were on, when you played the role in Ghost, which is, I don't know if it was one of your first, or your biggest first role, but the pressure to be that horrible, evil person who, by the way, every time the show comes on, I hate you. Like, it, you're so good. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, look, he is totally messing with you. Like, I find myself in a, like, you know, being one of those people on the couch who's yelling. Oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah, Ghost was so interesting because it was my first big break. You know, I've been I've been working for five or six years as an actor, but you know, starting out as an actor is hard. And even though I had had jobs, I hadn't had any big jobs, and I was you never know if it's going to work, right? So then I got this massive opportunity to play a leading role in this great script. And here's the the surprising thing about that one was I knew what I wanted to do with the part. And while it was a little, it was more than a little bit intimidating to suddenly be, you know, you know, driving on Paramount Studios and have my own parking space and be with these movie stars who are much more established than me and be the new kid. My comfort zone was in my work. Like I, I was like, okay, I don't know how to do any of this movie star stuff, but I do know what I want to do with this character. Ah. And I felt pretty confident it was it was really you know, obviously I had my moments of of uh insecurity but i did feel like i knew what i was doing um, and what i wanted to do with the part and i knew the director liked my approach to the character and um yeah so the it, it wasn't mm. fraught in the work it was more just uh i just felt so lucky mm -hmm. to have that opportunity because it's like the difference in life i guess and in certainly in show business you know between those moments of success and being locked out on the other side of the high yeah. walls is it's just God is in charge of that one. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. You can't, it's it's always happenstance and like how did I end up here? So I was very appreciative, I have to say. And when you when you land a big role like that, do the big roles roll in? Is that what happens usually? No, that's the illusion <laughs> that that's what happens. <laughs> I guess I, you know, thought, okay, I've done my job now. Now it all just sort of happens, right? Um, and it just doesn't mm. work that way. You know, you have to be constantly uh, reinventing yourself in life. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you get lucky and yeah, you get a certain draft. I mean, for sure, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm exaggerating. It completely transformed my, my career and I was on the map and I did get opportunities that I never would have had before that. But at the same time, you know, this idea that, we often have as young people, if I can just achieve that, yeah. then I'm set, then I'm in, then I'm well, I'm good, I'm in the club. And life just doesn't work that way. I don't think in any profession, I'm sure certainly not in yours, right? I mean, you know, you 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 do one thing and then you're you got to think, okay, how do I want to grow? Where does this go? And I'm the I'm the one who has to be in the driver's seat of that, or it probably won't happen, or the momentum will die down and mm -hmm. You know, we just have to take her. So I so that was a bit of a shock. To yeah. Me. Do you miss? I, I know you love live theater, right? That was that was that's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love. I love it. I, I. I. You know, the past since Scandal ended. Mm -hmm. Um. I think you know we talked about it. since Scandal ended a few years ago. I've been you know mm -hmm. I've done two plays on Broadway since mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. which were just incredible because I couldn't do a play the whole run of Scandal. So it was like seven or eight years. Um. Uh, possibly even longer before, you know, since I had done a play in New York. Mm -hmm. So I did a network mm -hmm. with Brian Cranston, which was a blast. Such an incredible production. And then last year I did a, 
The Inheritance, mm. uh, which just won the Tony Award for Best Play. So uh, I was really lucky to be to a part of two amazing productions. You know, you're just well, now. Now you're you're talking about this other uh, series that you have out. It's called The Hot Zone Anthrax. It just it's a three night event. Tell us about this this that's on uh, Nat Geo. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the story of, um, if people remember, in 2001, three weeks after 9-11, uh, there were a, a bunch of letters that were sent around to uh, uh, Congress and the media and NBC and, mm -hmm. you know, it, and, and the National Enquirer, and they contained anthrax powder, which is highly lethal uh, biological weapon, frankly. I mean, it's a substance that you find in a lot of ways, but mm -hmm. it, it had been weaponized um, and uh, it terrorized the country. And people kind of don't remember it. And the investigation is just fascinating. And um, I play a guy called Bruce Ivins, who um, I, uh, was the uh, lead anthrax researcher for the U.S. Defense Department, for the, the Army. And he was a very strange dude, um, <laughs> but very brilliant. But, you know, he got obsessed with this investigation and kind of got sucked into it and ended up kind of derailing his life uh, in ways that I really don't want to spoil for the audience. But right. so you follow my story and also Daniel Day Kim, the wonderful actor Daniel Day Kim plays the lead FBI agent who is, um, you know, running this investigation. And he's also a microbiologist trying to, you know, find this. It's really an interesting story. Wow. How much of tell, it, you know, people don't know. Yeah, Sorry, how well. much of it is, um, is it re, is true to the facts and how much of it is a little bit of poetic license? It's very true. I would say, you know, there's certain ways in which they compressed time um, and they, you know, the, like Daniel's character is a bit of a composite of a number of different FBI agents because there were different people who led the investigation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over the period of years. But so they, you know, taken typical poetic license with that. Uh, Bruce's story, my character's story is shockingly uh, accurate, I think, mm. you know, and certain events are compressed, timelines are messed up a little bit, but uh, it, it's, it's very true to the spirit. And Nat Geo, I have to say, was really meticulous about about getting it right and they had done this is the second season of this show the hot zone they did one last year that was very very successful for them with uh, juliana margulies mm. and, and toby emmerich and a wonderful cast um about uh, the ebola uh, um epidemic and the roots of that um so you know they're just very they're national geographic they want to get it right well the the hot zone by the way hot zone anthrax it premieres a three-night event sunday november 28th 9 8 central on Nat Geo, and it's also streaming on Hulu. Tony, thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging with us today. Oh, it's so good to talk to you. I'll, I'll we'll see you back see. in New York. I'll be sitting at the same restaurant waiting for you to walk by. Okay. <laughs> okay, All right. right. Have a good okay. one. Coming up after the break, we've got uh, Judith Light. She'll be joining us. And then Cal Penn coming up right after. This. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Is 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. I'm excited about our next guest. He's got a memoir out. It is called, you can't be serious, Cal Penn joins us. Hey, Cal, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Oh, my God. How do you feel? It's it's almost book pub day. I know. Well, it came out on Tuesday, so it's almost a week, actually, which, Hold is, on. which is nice. Let me, oh, oh, let me start this up. Okay, so it's been a week. There we are. Okay, so we're all together. So how has it been received so far, first of all? Uh, great. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited that, you know, it, it took four and a half years and I wanted the book to feel like we were having a beer together. And, uh, and I, when something takes four and a half years to write and, and people read it in three days, I'm like, Whoa, hold on. You, does that mean, does that mean it was too, too easy of a read? And they're like, no, 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 it actually was gripping. And so I read it fast. I'm like, this is awesome. So I've been really loving it. I've been loving everyone's reaction. Well, you have a beautiful, beautiful life story. Um, I, it was just interesting for me to read some of your backstory about how I knew that you were obviously an immigrant and we're speaking as immigrants together here today, but your, your parents and your grand, your grandmother marched with Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, this is the the richness of your history. How much of that of those stories were conveyed to you when you were younger? And were you like, yay, my parents and grandparents are cool? Or were you like, oh, God, give me my high tops and my backpack and let's try to get away from all that? Well, that's the thing about these stories, isn't it? Like, I, you know, I, I'm the son of immigrants. I, my b- brother and I were born in New Jersey. Our grandparents lived with us for for uh, off and on through our whole childhood. And the stories I remember when I was like eight years old mm-hmm. at the dinner table and, you know, everyone's grandma coerces their grandkids into eating their vegetables. And I remember, you know, my grandparents would tell us stories about what it was like marching with Gandhi, being beaten by British soldiers and thrown in jail. And the eight-year-old me, I just remember being like, ugh, there she goes again. (laughs) Grandma with another story about Gandhi. Here we go. And it it wasn't till, you know, it wasn't till late middle school, early high school when you start getting chapters that about American history that include Dr. King and nonviolent civil disobedience Mm -hmm. and Mahatma Gandhi. And you're like, whoa. Wow, this is the whole, you know, one of the big frameworks of, of modern day civil rights is, is, is that. And it, it was really grounding. Yeah. Were you ever able to have a heart to heart or did your grandparents or I don't know if they're still alive, but were you able to talk to them and really understand what they went through and what they stood for? Yeah, they're, they're not still alive, unfortunately, but I, I was old enough to be able to have wow. those heart to heart conversations. And I, I mentioned them in the book because I, you know, you, you don't at least I didn't grow up thinking um, that my grandparents were were any different because mm-hmm. we we you know my, my town was predominantly Jewish and a lot of my friends' grandparents were Holocaust survivors, mm-hmm. so just the we revered our grandparents collectively. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and I feel this way about other people's grandparents too. Frankly, is that uh, the generation of our grandparents had to deal with so much and make their voices heard in such a way that they're the way they tell their stories with such grace and mm-hmm. grounding. Um, I remember growing up feeling, you know, we were not a political household, but I remember the by 2021 standards, this the phrase of know your privilege and check your privilege mm-hmm. was basically how we grew up mm-hmm. but without calling it that. And, and, and so I'm, I'm thankful that I had the chance to ask them those questions once I was a little bit older. Um, I remember when I was in third grade or so, I hated roll call because I was I would get the slop sweats. I would literally like pray that they would pass my name because I knew it was like the landmine in the teacher's list. And I remember my heart pounding. I'm like, they're like, Jim Kaufman. I'm like, oh, God, we're getting closer. Here we come. Here we come. And I would pray it would go away. How what what is your what's your given name on your birth certificate? And how did you handle that name growing up? Yeah, so my, my name on my birth certificate is Gulpin Modi or Kalpin Modi, depending on how you how you mm-hmm. pronounce it. And uh, and it, it, there was, you know, the the only time I think I felt that way is exactly what you said. It was never my own teachers, but it was always if we had a substitute yes, teacher. Yes, somebody we else. Had to say, well, that's when you you knew like something was coming. <laughs> where the the teacher, would, depending on who it was, you know, they might try to make a little fun of it, which mm-hmm. when you're 11 years old is terrifying, or they might just genuinely butcher it, in which yeah. case the other know how to pronounce it are, are, are kind of laughing. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, um, I, had, I never really felt, 
uh, any any big sense of awareness around my name mm-hmm. again because our our town it was predominantly white but the diversity was there were there were Pol- Polish families and Italian families and Jewish families and everyone kind of spoke another language at home yeah even if the kids didn't the parents did or the grandparents did so it wasn't actually until I, I started working as an actor in in Hollywood and dealing with my first experiences with typecasting and realizing whoa wait a second this is this could actually be a real barrier to entry for for mm-hmm. people um, and most of it wasn't really grounded in my name it was grounded in the in what I looked like and mm-hmm. and I I, uh, I decided to write two or three chapters about it early in the book not to kind of call anyone out or say woe is me but because I'm so happy with how how Hollywood's progressed so much yeah in the last 20 years. I love what I do so much that I thought maybe this is a story worth telling just for, for that perspective. Well, I do think it's interesting because you were saying like on your resume, you changed it to Cal Penn and you got, I don't know how many more just auditions or, you know, and that's a big deal. That just shows that I think no matter no matter what, and probably in so many industries, people look at a name and say, oh, okay, I know what that is. I know what she is. I know what he is when really nobody, they don't know. Yeah, they don't know. And the, the, the uh, <laughs> The, I, I'm glad to finally t- tell, like, have the time to tell the full story yeah. because it was definitely the name component. But th- I also got new headshots. I think I, I must have been 21, <laughs> and and uh, and I put one of them in in one of the chapters in the book because it's so ridiculous. Like, it's glamour shots minus 20. percent So it's just this. <laughs> it's this absurd looking headshot. So I got new pictures done around the same yeah. time that my college buddies were the ones who said. Uh, what do you think of a screen name? And I said, what do you guys mean? And they said, well, you know, like Whoopi Goldberg's name isn't Whoopi Goldberg. And I said, it's not. And they go, no, her name is Karen Johnson. And Whoopi Goldberg is far more memorable. So why don't you come up with a, a screen name? And I said, well, what would it be? And this just opened a door to your college friend just eviscerating you. They said, well, what about Cal Pacino? <laughs> junior 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 you know and i was like all right i get it i get it and in my case you know the same way that sort of joseph becomes joe uh mm-hmm. or kelpin had, had become cal for a while um but i hadn't considered whether i wanted to to kind of come up with a screen name based on that so in fairness it was all of those things happening at the same time i'll never know which one had more of an effect than the other but you're right i mean to your point is it, it when when you see things like that that made a difference i'm so glad now there's so many actors and performers out there who say we don't have to do that you yeah, know who cares it, it, now yeah yeah, yeah. Did, yeah did your parents care that you changed it for the screen oh you know what's funny is since my parents are immigrants my dad moved to america with 12 dollars in his pocket mm. and and uh and they i think their feeling was yeah whatever you gotta do to get your foot in the door you do it that's the work ethic we raised you with, you know? I, and plus, I wasn't changing it legally. I think that probably made a big difference, too. But it was so funny. It was just like, whatever you got to do, we all make sacrifices in mm-hmm. this life. You, you, know, you, did, you do what you Did you run the book by your parents? I always wonder when you write about your life, because your life is through your eyes, not through their eyes. And how, how was it received by, by your family? I sent them several drafts mm-hmm. and there is, you know, to be fair, it's, I, I've, I've had the, the blessing of a crazy life story and have made stoner movies and, and family <laughs> movies, took a sabbatical to work for the white house. Mm-hmm. It's all in there. And what's so funny to me is the one thing, the one thing that they said you might need to change <laughs> is a joke that I make about a cousin of mine who I've had a long <laughs> competition with. We, it started years ago where we would try to throw water on each other's faces where the other person wouldn't expect it. And it's now graduated to like, what's the biggest prank you can pr- mm-hmm. play on someone? And in the book, I write that he caught gonorrhea during the pandemic. And uh, in a footnote, in a small footnote, <laughs> I admit that he actually has never had gonorrhea, nor did he catch it during the pandemic. But nobody reads <laughs> footnotes. So that was my way of like, and my parent. That was the one thing in the book. My parents are like, "You absolutely cannot do this." Uh, his parents would be very upset. So I had to change his name. I kept the joke in there, but I had. But it's so funny to me that after of all of the things in the book, that was the one. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on today. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? 
you have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What did your parents think when you told them you were interested in acting? What what was that conversation like? That conversation initially, you know, when I was a kid, when I was six, 15 or 16, it, it didn't go well because the, the stability they knew about yeah. America, you know, d- dad came here to be an engineer. My mom has a master's degree in chemistry. You know, they, they were part of a post-1965 wave of immigration because we didn't have enough doctors and engineers mm-hmm. in the United States. So they, they were kind of confused. And I think there was a lot of pressure from the Indian community to not go into the arts. And I called them a few times when I was researching the book. And I remember saying to them, um, hey, how embarrassed were you when I decided I wanted to be an actor? Because mm-hmm. I know it wasn't easy. And my dad said something very sweet. Both parents did, actually. They said, um, they said how did you exaggerate everything? I was like, well, yeah, I'm an actor. <laughs> they said, how did you get it into your head that we were embarrassed? We weren't embarrassed. We were scared uh-huh. because we never thought that that was a real career that somebody could have. We didn't know anybody who had a career Mm. in the, and I, you know, as an adult now, um, and and thinking about experiences of of growing up and everything, it's such an interesting thing to know that about our Mm. parents or about about, about any parent really, that you want what's best for your kid. And sometimes Mm. that manifests itself in ways that you don't expect. Boy, that's really beautiful to have your dad be able to say that out loud to you while you're alive is pretty big. When do you think your dad was the proudest of you? Oh boy. Um, I, I know that question for my mom, so I'm assuming it's a similar thing. I had the the, the privilege of being able to speak at, at part of uh, the inaugural concert when uh, President Obama got inaugurated on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And, um, you know, the whole room for that event, the green room was in the Civil Rights Museum that's in the basement of, of the uh, the Lincoln Memorial. And there, you know, they kept all the exhibits on. There's, there was footage of folks being, you know, beaten by uh, by the police and dogs and a whole civil rights thing. And, and my parents, uh, at the end of the concert, just very simply, my mom said, um, your grandparents would be really proud mm-hmm. of you. And I, uh, I mean, I kind of lost it, obviously, mm. but I just thought that, you know, thank you. Um, wow, that's big. Yeah. That's really big. Wow. <sighs> Look what you did. <laughs> Look what you did. Look what you did to your folks and your grandparents. That's beautiful. My gosh. Wow. You know, you know, it was a big moment for you and for them. But boy, just to hear those words. Um, what did that time mean to you? Um, working at the White House and and um, just, th- I mean, what a switch from everything you'd been doing. Yeah, I knew that, um, I knew I, I, it was only going to be a year. I ended up staying for a little over two years because uh, no shocker to anybody these days, but government takes a really long time <laughs> to get anything done. Uh, and when I was working on things, I, I wanted to be there to see certain things through. And um, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how many people take a, a leave of absence from their private sector careers to serve government. And in my case, yeah, I was working with thousands of other people who were doing the same thing at the White House. But, you know, we do that with our, our church groups and our temple groups or whatever, you know, whatever that is in your own community. Mm-hmm. People really do give back a lot. And, and the biggest takeaway, I think, from my time there was how much good people can do if they actually get involved. Mm. The system is really 
it's sometimes designed to just to make you feel crummy and to feel like your voice doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And that's how the system keeps people out. I mean, that's no mm-hmm. big secret, you know? So it actually made me feel more motivated that when people show up, whether it's something like student loans or mm. how to pay medical bills or, you know, whatever that it is. And look, as a junior staffer, most of the stuff that I worked on, it just wasn't sexy enough to mm-hmm. be on the news every mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. So I was really getting the perspective of talking to people who might disagree with what the president had to say or, or people who wanted him to do more, uh, not just less. And it was a really unique um, opportunity. I'm, I, I, it, it, felt, uh, it felt very humbling, and I'm, I'm glad I had that, that opportunity. Did going back to acting after that seem... I don't know, small somehow, or did it still have the same luster that it had when you had left it for a bit? Uh, no, definitely didn't seem small. It, it, it uh, you know, if anything, look, acting is always my first love yeah. and I love storytelling. I think the, the, the magic that I love about what I do, which I definitely am glad for the perspective on having worked in government is, you know, c- comedy especially, and I know you know this from all the work that you mm-hmm. do, you know, when you can, when you can bring people together with, mm-hmm. a, with a story, it just feels so nice because the world is so divided. Mm -hmm. And whether it's your crazy uncle at Thanksgiving who you can watch an inappropriate movie with, you know, an R-rated comedy, or whether it's uh, buddies of yours who you have a long history with, that's a magic that I love. I loved it about the Harold and Kumar movies. I loved it about Mm -hmm. How I Met Your Mother, which is the first thing I got to do after working at the White House. So on the contrary, I actually felt, um, I felt more, you know, more happiness going back to acting, than, than the other way around. Mm, mm. And you do, you touch a little bit on your personal life. You have a partner who you've had for 11 years. It's like, yay, for, for you, it's just like Wednesday, here it is. Was that was that part of your life easy to write about um, for you? I mean, it's kind of very, I think it's, you tell it in sort of a matter of fact way, um, but how was that for you to present that? Yeah, I I, uh, I I really enjoyed writing. It's chapter eighteen where I talk about my my partner Josh, and I I put him in the same category as my parents and asking them questions about whether uh, it was okay to tell part of their story because mm-hmm. every everybody I'm close to in my life is they shun the cameras, they hate the spotlight, um, you know. And for somebody who's like literally my job as an actor is like mm-hmm. look at me. So, uh, <laughs> so the story I wanted to tell about Josh is how we met and fell in love and this bizarre, you know he we met over a NASCAR race and a bunch of beers. And that's for anybody whose partner is very different from them. It's a story that I think a lot of people can relate to. And same thing with my parents, you know, they, I, I write about how my dad grew up in a, in a tenement in Mumbai and there were six of them in a, in a, in, a, in one room. It was, there wasn't even a separate bedroom. There was no separate bathroom. You had to, if you wanted to use the toilet, you had to walk all the way down the hall. It was all communal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wanted to make sure, to your point, it, it's all very matter of fact because it's my mm-hmm. life and I'm so happy to share it with people. But uh, when your story bumps up on someone else's story, you also want to be respectful. So I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad for that. Well, Cal, thank you so much. Again, Cal's book is called You Can't Be Serious. It was out on Tuesday. It's out right now. Get it wherever books are sold. Cal, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Hilda. Nice to talk to you. All right. Good talking to you. We're going to have Miss Judith Light join us right after. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. Today 
is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker. A Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker. A Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Hoda Show. Oh, welcome back to the Hoda Show. So excited. You know why? Because I loved you to light. But get in line because everybody does. Um, <laughs> I'm one of many. I am the Greek chorus. She's an actress, a producer, and an activist. You guys know her from Who's the Boss, from Dallas, from Transparent, Ugly Betty. She's been on Broadway countless times, Tony's Galore. I mean, what else is there? Except for another show out November 19th. It, she, this is a, a Lin-Manuel Miranda uh, idea. It's beautiful. It's called Tick, Tick, Boom. Hi, Judith. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's great to see you. I mean, first of all, how, how have you been doing? Let's just start there for a second. Uh, I've been... I've been I've been really good. I've been really busy. Um, starting at about the end of May, the beginning of June, everything sort of came together very quickly. And I have been shooting a, a series called Julia about Julia Child for HBO Max up in Boston uh, with some really dear friends and great artists. And so I was doing that. So I was flying back and forth to Boston. And then I did a movie in Oyster Bay, New York called Down Low with my friend Zach Quinto. And then I went to Savannah, Georgia, and I just got back. Uh, I was shooting a movie with Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy for the last two months. And um, my good friend Reed Burney, uh, directed by the glorious Mark Mylott, who uh, directs a lot of succession. So I just got back. So what is I'm here happening? And I'm happy to. I'm, happy I'm exploding. To to this is unbelievable. First of all, I mean, this is okay. So this actually addresses a main question in Tick Tick Boom, which I think is beautiful, and it is, what are you meant to do with the time that you have? And That's I right. feel like you are constantly creating. You are constantly putting things into the universe for us to consume, new things, great things. How do you decide, Judith, you, you, you know, you could pack your schedule so there's not one moment to breathe. You obviously make choices. I, I do. And it's and as I've matured, I've made even more choices that are different mm -hmm. and they're more conscious and more in alignment with who I am becoming. And so that those are those things are really important to me. And speaking of Tick, Tick, Boom, of course, I've known Lynn for a long, long time. I was introduced to Lynn Manuel Miranda by my dear friend, Tommy Kale, who was the person who brought me back to Broadway when I did a play called Lombardi. But the, the thing about the movie, and I think to your point, is that we, if we're not becoming more conscious mm -hmm. as we're, as we're maturing, um, we're not developing ourselves, expanding ourselves, evolving in a way that actually looks set ourselves in a transformative way and when you see tick tick boom it has that aliveness to it and how do we make choices and what really matters and even though time is going by mm -hmm. we have to not look at that so much but how we are relating to that so how do you do it like i i love the concept of this of this movie but how how does how does judith do it um Look, I have a, a, a really great team of people mm -hmm. whose advice I, I value mm -hmm. enormously. Mm -hmm. um, and I've started meditating in a more regular fashion now than I was meditating before. Mm -hmm. I was meditating before, but not in the same disciplined way that I'm doing it now. So I really um, get myself quiet mm -hmm. and listen to what I'm, I'm telling myself, mm. basically, mm -hmm. it's like, maybe this isn't the right choice, mm -hmm. or maybe it is the right choice. But I also have come to a place in my life now, and I don't know if you've done this as well, um, to, to really say, any choice I make will be okay. <laughs> it will all work out. Mm -hmm. I'm not making mistakes. I'm not missing out. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know, that FOMA thing of your know, fear of missing, missing out. out. Yeah. And I'm sure my husband and I don't have children, but you have children mm -hmm. and you can see how they teach you mm -hmm. or enable you to learn, not to teach you, but to enable you to learn how you 
make choices, how you value time. So what I do is I, I listen to the team mm-hmm. and then I make my own choice out of that. And I have a lot of great people around me that really support me. So that's, that's some of how I do it. Yeah. I love that. I mean, someone once told me that a prayer is when you talk to God and meditation is when you listen. And sometimes we're, we're talking, we're always talking, we're filling our journals. Or, or, talking. We're, do- or we're, or we're doing, or we're doing both. Yeah. But I think, I think that I, I love that you said that. Mm-hmm. The the idea is to get rid of what I've always called, and a lot of people call the programmed mind, mm-hmm. the one that has where you're you you think about things from a place that is not supportive to you. Yeah, and w- get it, using meditation helps me get rid of that mind, that negative mind, mm-hmm. that programmed mind, the way that I learned about things in the world that were might be true or might not be true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't know until you actually begin to investigate that. And that's kind of what I've been I've been doing more recently. Oh, I, lo- I love all this. I, I, I like that. This is my favorite lane of a conversation. But I do also. You want- are this. You are <laughs> I'm this. learning this how you operate. I, I, didn't, you, didn't you do that when you when you adopted your children? Yes, I did. I did. And I realized, yeah. And I, I, I realized that my priorities have had always been out of whack and I not always they I guess they were it, they were where they were supposed to be at the time but there was a point where I just I had a yearning and I it was like it was an itch I couldn't scratch it was a need I couldn't yeah. fill and I had yeah. to and I knew it, it just came so easily it was like breathing it wasn't even like am I gonna take a risk it didn't even feel like a risk it felt like life like let's go already um that's that's the point and those children were calling to you Mm. and you and you heard them so that's you know yours is a much (laughs) deeper more resonant my we're talking Mm. about my career uh and and work choices but the 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 same is true the context is the same the content is different and yours has a much more um it's a deeper not uh, not deeper. That's not the word I want. But there, there's a resonance to it mm-hmm. where you're talking to a to a, 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 another soul wow. that that oh. longs that's calling for you. Yeah. Well, you. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. You think you run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. And we... Let me ask you about Julia because I'm fascinated by Julia Child. There, she's sort of having this awesome resurgence. I mean, I feel like you know her name is just coming up more and more. So, tell me about that project. Isn't that tr- yeah it's so true? And I've loved her forever. And I've you know my grandmother was a great cook. My mother was a great cook, and I uh, have cooked all, all of my life. I love to cook. And then one day I woke up and I turned to my husband and I said. I'm not cooking anymore. I'm done. done. (laughs) And he said, what? 
And I said, your turn. <laughs> so he has become this incredible cook. So anyway, to Julia, um, my very dear friend, friend Chris Kaiser who is the creator and producer with Daniel Goldfarb of this of this series for HBO Max um called me and he said I I have this part in this in this series that we're doing and he said would you think about it look at it consider it and I started reading about this woman Blanche mm-hmm. Knopf and that is how you you pronounce it. I thought it was Knopf, okay. as in Knopf Publishing. It's Knopf. Um, and she's one of the most fascinating women I had ever read about that very few people know about. And I said to Chris and Daniel, I said, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, the the team is great. My mm-hmm. sweet, wonderful friend David Hyde Pierce is in it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Sarah Lancashire and uh, Fiona Scott. There's just really grand mm-hmm. folk in this and a lot of New York actors. And the story is really about how she, in essence, created what eventually became the Food Network. People were watching her and learning from her. And she had this generous, genuine, humorous, warm way about her that took the onus off of what was the French style of Mm -hmm. cooking. She made something accessible. And what you begin to see is in this series is her life. Mm. And the woman who really supported her at Knopf Publishing was not my character, Blanche Knopf, but uh, Knopf, but actually Judith Jones, who was the editor at ah. uh, Knopf Publishing that really loved Julia and supported her. And it's the story of her relationship with her husband as well. So it's this um, I think people are going to watch it just like they watched Julia when they saw her. Um, yes. On the French Death. On, well, on, on, in the early days, it was like PBS at the beginning. Well, it's so funny about her because she didn't really make her TV debut until she was 50. She didn't start cooking That's- until her late 40s. I mean, she's like the ultimate in late bloomers. And also, I didn't know that she and her husband were like so hot and heavy. She was like, you got to have the three F's. She said food, flattery and boop. But those were the, I mean, you look, when you think of Julia Child, like, I don't know what kinds of things you think about, but boy, they were really hot and heavy. And that's, and that's in this. Yeah. And you'll see, and you'll see what's really um, exciting to me to see about it is that they're a more mature couple. Yeah. So that they didn't, you know, they didn't give way, they didn't give any of that away they felt that that was really important to the dynamics. And what you're talking about is a relationship of support on both sides. And he really, I mean, he was one of the first feminists. He supported her like crazy. He said, you can do this. And by the way, if you, if you do any research on Julia Child, you know that she was, um, she was a a pilot as well. I mean, they were in, they were very involved during World War II. Mm -hmm. So if, you, you know, some people say that she was actually a spy for the United States. I don't know about that, but there was a history there of somebody who didn't actually know what she wanted to do. And I love what you said about being a late bloomer. Yes. Let's hear it for the late bloomers. And I love to, I saw an old clip of her standing with Tom Brokaw years and years and years ago. And Tom was like, you're awfully tall. Cause you know, she's six feet towering and has her unique style. And just picture now how, you know, every person tries to make over everyone on TV. Julie was like dropping the omelet. Oh boy, there it goes. You know, just put it back in the pan. I just remember the one yeah. Where she said about the chicken, she dropped the chicken on the floor. <laughs> she said, oh, dear. Well, 30 second rule. You can still, you know, she said nobody will see it. So she just, but, but, but what that speaks to, what you're yeah. speaking to, um, and I'm, uh, I, I interrupted you. No, you didn't. Just, just, to, just to say, there's nothing more enchanting, compelling, mm. and, um, alive than authenticity Mm -hmm. if you are your true if Mm. you are your true self there is such value in that and we have lost it yeah um somewhere in this you know this celebrity red carpet have to have it a certain way gotta wear this gotta look like that all of a sudden you look at her and pbs was like uh you know she's not really good looking i mean you'll see all of this in the series i think it's gonna drop in march on um hbo max by the way it's gonna be hot and they have been 
and in so supportive of this uh, this mm. show. I, I really think it's going to do wonderful. Well, it's well. going to be a hit. Judith Light, I mean, for sure, it's going to be a hit. We're just reminding everybody also that Tick, Tick, Boom, it comes out on November 19th and all your other projects. Just come on the Today Show and talk about them because we need you. I'll be happy to. Okay. Are you well? Yeah, You're I'm good. great. I'm Everything's great. Good. Girls are great. Thank you, Judith. Thank you so much. And thanks for being on our show with me. I appreciate it. Happy to be with you. Take care. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. Judith Light, man. Julia, what a, it's going to be amazing on HBO Max. And by the way, I should point out that um, there's a documentary called Julia that that is going to be out soon. And it's by the same two filmmakers who made RBG, Betsy West and Julie Cohen. Uh, they're, they're Oscar nominated, those two. So anyway, Julia Child is having a resurgence. That's what's happening. And you know why? Nobody knows. But everybody's into it because she's right. Judith Light is right. She's authentic. She's who she is. That's what we should take away from the show. Let's all try to be exactly who we are. We don't care what the Junior League says we should wear. We don't care about our hair. We, we just do what we want. Just do what you want, at least for one day. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you back here on The Hoda Show next week. Nice talking to you. Hello, and thanks for joining us here on Today All Day, and welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Joe Fryer, in for Carson on this day before Thanksgiving. Just ahead, we're going to highlight a few shows and movies that you can enjoy on your days off. Plus, calling all Saved by the Bell fans, we're catching up with Jesse Spano herself, Elizabeth Berkeley Lauren, on the new season out today. Plus, Tia Mori has a new Christmas movie to tell us about, along with what she enjoys watching with her son. But first, let's get to your Pop Start Plus headlines. First up, the Grammys. The Recording Academy has announced the 2022 nominees, leading the pack with 11 John Batiste, including recognition for Best American Roots Performance and Best Contemporary Composition. Not far behind, Her and Doja Cat, each with eight nods. These ladies have also made their mark as the most nominated women this year. After being snubbed from last year's nominees and announcing a boycott of the show, The Weeknd has found himself with three nominations this year, thanks to his work with Kanye West and Doja Cat. And to top it off, The Weeknd's 2019 hit, Blinding Lights, was recently named number one on Billboard's greatest of all time Hot 100 songs based on its weekly performance on the Billboard charts. Kudos to The weekend. Speaking of snubs, looks like there are a few artists already calling out the Academy for being looked over. Miley Cyrus taking to Twitter to share she's in good company with other famous musicians who've never won the golden gramophone. Machine Gun Kelly joining her online writing, WTF is wrong with the Grammys. We'll see how it all plays out when the winners are announced early next year. Next up, Bel Air. Peacock dropped a first look at the dramatic reimagining of Will Smith's classic 90s sitcom, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The teaser gives us a peek at newcomer Jabari Banks taking on the role of Will in the upcoming series. This is a story all about how my life got flipped, show me, show me, show turned upside down. I looked at my kingdom. I was finally there to sit on my throne. Unlike the original series, Bel Air is set to be a one hour drama, taking a deeper dive into the emotions and conflicts of the characters. The series is making its way to Peacock sometime next year. Next up, Ariana Grande and Kelly Clarkson in a sneak peek for Jimmy Fallon's upcoming game show, That's My Jam. The two voice coaches battle it out on the mic, singing a medley of classic hits at random. Check this out.
that's what I call a sing-off. The winner will be revealed when the first episode premieres on Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on NBC. Speaking of Jimmy Fallon, next up, The Tonight Show. Fallon broke out his beloved hashtag segment last night, this time around calling out the best tweets using the phrase, my family is weird. And of course, the internet delivered some great one-liners. He says, at Thanksgiving, my family sings Rock the Boat every single time we pass the gravy boat from one person to the next. <laughs> the rock the boat, baby. The rock the boat. The the boat over. My dad kicks off Thanksgiving yep. by using a slingshot to launch a turkey leg across the yard. Yep. First kid to get to it is considered King Thanksgiving for the year. <laughs> my dad taught all of us as children how to say the alphabet backwards just in case we ever get pulled over. <laughs> this is the perfect week to be hashtag thankful for weird families everywhere. Thanks, Jimmy. Next up, Euphoria. Following that cliffhanger season finale that hit the air almost two years ago in last winter's two-episode special, Zendaya is back in the first trailer for season two, and the first look teases that Rue might be back to her old bad habits. When you're younger, everything feels so permanent. But as you get older, you begin to realize nothing is. And everyone you love can drift away. Euphoria season two is set to hit HBO Max January 9th. Finally, Ye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, on Tuesday he posted this video to Instagram showing off his five-year-old son's football skills with Tom Brady. That's right, little St. West is getting lessons on how to toss the old pigskin from the goat himself. Well, you catch it good too. Look at that. Ready? Uh, <laughs> hey, Daddy, you're gonna have to throw me the ball all the time now. How about that? You could play uh, catch with my son, and I'll draw with your son. You would love that. I'm a little bit creative. Yes, I know that. <laughs> Now that's one for the memory book. Very dramatic there. All right, and those are your Pop Start Plus headlines. Up next, Elizabeth Berkley Lauren with a preview of the newest season of Saved by the Bell. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man who never changed. All right, it just did too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Elizabeth Berkley Lauren is no stranger to Bayside. She starred as Jesse Spano in the original Saved by the Bell, and now in the reboot of the beloved show, the Peacock Revival is kicking off its second season, and Elizabeth told us what to expect. Check it out. Welcome back, Bayside. Season two, Saved by the Bell, is even more, dare I say, exciting because season one, we introduced new characters to people. Obviously the OGs were there as well, um, but th there was so much to establish, whether it be who we were as grownups, the new kids, the tone being that it's reimagining re and not a direct reboot like other shows out there. There was a lot happening with the new cast. So season two, we get to dive really deep in a lot of fun ways because every character is negotiating and navigating their place in this 
world at Bayside. You've got the grown-ups going through their stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of room for some great comedy that our amazing writers know exactly what to do with. And um, there's some sparks with Slater that hasn't happened in a lot of years. So we'll leave it at that. You've got to watch to find out. Just as long as you're not using exercise as a substitute for feeling your feelings. That's what I was going to say. But our kids too are going through, you know, their friendship issues and romances and so much fun to be had in a world right now where we need some laughs. Like this, this is the show to, you know, get cozy on the couch for Thanksgiving weekend and binge it. Well, I could never do therapy. Don't believe in it. Everybody could benefit from therapy Slater. Mario and I have always just had this Silly, fun banter. It's like brother and sister, but who never fight, okay? So we just have always had this ease around each other and we bring out the silliness in one another. But I mean, we're obviously both extremely professional and focused and determined and all those things. But once we get on set, there is always just this kind of natural, great chemistry where we really want the best for the other. It was interesting this season. I don't want to give too much away, but there is a little spark between Slater and Jesse. Fate is real. You're working at the same school as your first love. You've been through a lot. I mean, there were moments though that we were, we were cracking up, like when we had to do certain things. Having Lark back in general was such a joy. We've never stopped, you know, being friends and I've always just loved her so much. We shared so much as kids together and she was right back to Lisa Turtle. Like people, it, it's like, uncanny how amazing she just dropped right back in looking gorgeous and she's so funny and we just had fun catching up and reminiscing and also just celebrating the current moment to be together we we got to do a lot of great fun scenes together especially tiffany and lark and i got to do some great scenes in episode six which was so much fun just like old girlfriends coming back together in the script but also in life just the physical, like being together at the max. That place is so symbolic of connection and togetherness and togetherness with my original cast. And the five of us sitting there, you know, just we all were deeply saddened um, to hear the tragic news about Dustin when we found out. It was all so fast and quick and obviously so young. It was truly tragic and it was so important for us to be able to pay tribute to him in a way that honored him because he's so loved and he was such a talent. And so Tracy Wigfield, you know, our showrunner and her writers really came came up with a way to do it that she then shared with us to see like, you know, how, would, how do we feel? How do we think the fans would feel? So we were able to kind of work this out together to try to come up with something that we felt would would feel right. I don't know if there's ever a perfect way to do this, but I do feel proud of the sensitivity and thought and care that went into it. And I hope the fans, you know, just really feel that and that it's it's the way they would um, have wanted it to. He just was always making all of us laugh so hard, especially in the schoolroom. We had a, a classroom that was, we had a tutor for the six of us and we all had a little, our own desks. And, you know, at that time, Dustin was, I guess two years younger and that at that age that's a big spread you know of development and, and all of that but he made us laugh so hard um all the time I he would make a sound or a, a crack a joke and he was brilliant in front of an audience especially like because we had a live audience on our show being that it was a traditional sitcom and it was like a pep rally and he just he would make the crowd laugh too and he, he had a real gift hey dad think fast this is gonna be awesome! You know, with so many Easter eggs and so many things that are just embedded uh, in season one and of course now season two that original fans are just gonna love. You're actually gonna have to watch it multiple times to make sure you don't miss all of them. It's funny, sometimes when my son watches the show and my son is nine or his friends are over and they're watching it, I'll hear a line or quickly catch something and I'll say, oh my God, we have to remember that for for next season to make sure we, we get that in somewhere because they're just, there's so many opportunities to to embed these 
genius moments that you know people will appreciate and get a kick out of. That's why we have all these reboots of teen shows from the 90s. Whoa, get a new idea, Hollywood. It's always been important for me to create a safe space for youth to know they're not alone and come together and be able to speak about issues that they feel alone in. And so for me, when when I knew that Tracy was on board to develop this reimagining and you know being on board as a producer as well, I was so grateful that it was her intent to, you know, highlight this incredible leading cast and create dimensional characters that you don't see all the time. And so it, it was definitely important for me to be on a show that reflects our world, our real world, and um, support those stories. They need to be told and characters need to be represented and seen. So it's, it's extremely important to me. Saved by the Bell is available today on Peacock, part of our parent company, NBC Universal. When we come back on Popstar Plus, Tia Mori is sharing what's on her must watch list. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast? Yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're back here on Pop Star Plus. We love Tia Mori from the role in the 90s sitcom Sister Sister alongside her real life twin Tamara. Recently, Tia sat down with us for the What I Watch series, and we started by asking her for a show that's a must see based on its theme song. Oh, come on. What I Watch for the theme song? Sister, sister. Never knew how much I missed ya. <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> um, definitely sister, sister. Like, I I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I truly believe that that is like one of the best theme songs. And it's so catchy, you know what I mean? Like, even when people see me in person, they go, sister, sister. So, sister, sister. What I watch when I need a good cry, definitely, um, animation like you know the pixar animation cartoons stuff that my kids watch always like crying I, and i just feel like it, they're they're such like feel good movies you know what i mean like there's always some really cool message at the end of the movie whether that's about love <laughs> or friendship you know i'm always always just Having a good cry, I would say, on on those type of films. 
What I watch when I need a good laugh, anything Jim Carrey related. I am telling you, that man is so hilarious. And again, I feel like a lot of these movies give me that nostalgic feel feeling um, because I watch them with my kids. So <laughs> I remember watching like Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> especially during the quarantine with Cree. And my goodness, we would laugh and we would laugh and we would laugh. And then Liar Liar, <laughs> when he was like, this pin is... <laughs> the color of this pen is... <laughs> the color of this pen is... <laughs> like he was trying to lie about it and he, or yeah, or tell the truth one of those scenarios, but I like laugh so hard and I know for a fact I'm gonna get a good laugh if I'm watching any like funny Jim Carrey movie. Ooh, what I watch that reminds me of my childhood. Ah, oh, gosh, it's a toss up. One, Goonies! Goonies, 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 all the way down to the way they dress, to the, just their lingo, their slang, the bike riding. Right? I think the bike riding is just like so nostalgic. Um, and then Stranger Things. I think that is why I'm in love with the show because it reminds me of my childhood from the music, even to the props that they use, whether that's the Walkman, you know, um, just the type of TV that you see, the bike riding again. I, I'm, that's my show. Like Stranger Things. I am obsessed with that show. I have watched every single season and I cannot wait for the next season. So what I watch and what I'm currently obsessed with would definitely have to be you. So, boy meets girl. Boy knows this is something special and he thinks, let me do everything I can to make this right. I just binge watched the first season and I'm now into the second season. I am obsessed with that show. It's so incredibly good. And Squid Games. Like I, I mean, it's, it's phenomenon. Like so many people are watching this show or have watched this show, but those two shows, I just, I, I'm just like, they're amazing. Like, I'm like, thank God for television. What I watch that might surprise people, that is such a good question, is horror. So I like, you know, people kind of like see me as, you know, like the, you know, girl next door or whatever. Like, why would she watch, you know, uh, Freddy Krueger or um, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like those kind of like horror movies, like mixed with thriller. I am like all for it. I like have my glass of wine and I, my popcorn. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what's going <laughs> to happen next? And then the other thing is, I love watching crime documentaries. Like, I mean, they are just, I don't know, they're just so interesting. And I think because I love psychology and, you know, I'm a psychology graduate. So I always question why people behave the way they do. So I love watching these, you know, crime documentaries because I want to know, like, how could someone get to that point? You know what I mean? Um, so crime documentaries, I think, is another another kind of answer that people would be like, what, that's Tia, you watch that? My husband still is perplexed. <laughs> He's like, what are you watching? Why, why, why are you watching this? What I watch that gets me into the Christmas spirit would definitely have to be Lifetime Christmas movies. You know, one thing that I love about Lifetime movies is they're very relatable and the stories are very grounded or grounding, should I say. But not only that, the reason why I love watching these movies is because of the diversity, right? What network really allows for women of color, meaning Latina, Asian, Black, uh, to be able to be the center storyline or the spotlight of the film, right? Um, so that's, you know, why I really look forward to watching these movies every Christmas. And then I, <laughs> I 
I am a part of an incredible Christmas movie called Miracle in Motor City, starring myself and, oh my gosh, Smokey Robinson and Mark Taylor. Um, so basically, I play Amber Dupont, and I basically bite off a little more than I can chew when I promise my church congregation um, that I can bring a legend to the Christmas pageant to basically help raise money. And so I have this big idea about bringing Smokey Robinson, right? And so I'm like, I can do this. Guys, I just got an email from Smokey's office. Yes, what does it say? Well, it's not his personal email. I'm on the mailing list. Okay, so what did it say? Guess who's kicking off the 12 days of caroling at the mall? No way. When? Today. You'll have to watch to see the movie. <laughs> watch and see the movie to see you know, what ends up happening. Um, but I think what's so special about this movie is the relationships that Am Amber DuPont has. One um, being her foster daughter, right? Um, also with the relationship that she's in with Eddie, who's played by Mark Taylor um, in the movie. And, you know, one thing that I love about Mark is he's very professional. Um, he's very focused. And this man knows his lines, right? But then not only that, like, we would like change, exchange uh, stories about 17 again. Like, dude, like, do you remember that? Like that was, we were in our twenties and it's like, it was nice to be able to like, you know, like really like work together. It, it was a lot of fun. He was fantastic. Oh my gosh. I'm excited for people to see this new, I feel like fresh take on a Christmas movie. Um, you really haven't seen Motown being infused into a storyline. And in, in the black culture, there's always some sort of pageant or some sort of, <laughs> you know, amazing event that happens on Christmas day at church. So to be able to have that relatability and that realness, and that's what I mean by it's very like grounding. The story is so relatable in that sense. I'm excited for people to feel um, and to fall in love with these characters, fall in love with Smokey, fall in love with Lily. She's just, oh, she's so phenomenal in this movie. And then just fall in love with the union of, you know, Amber and Eddie. And, and I, I'm looking forward to people, you know, just having that really good, um, feel good feeling when it comes to the holidays. And that's what these movies really do um, bring is that feeling of, joy, warmth, happiness, hope, and love. That was so fun. We should mention Tia's movie, Miracle in Motor City, airs this Sunday night on Lifetime. Coming up, I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah, we're taking a fun look back at Anchorman. Stay tuned. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Christina Applegate turns 50 this week, and in honor of the star's special day, we're taking a look back at her appearance back in 2004 to promote her new movie at the time, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burke.
Christina, good morning. Nice good to morning. see you. Hey, you must have had such a good time doing this movie with Will Ferrell. You know, it, it was, I wish that I could work with that group of men for the rest of my life. Really? Why? What was so great about it? You know, laughter is a healing thing, and so I must be the healthiest person on the planet <laughs> because all I did every day, all day long, was laugh and just have a, an amazing time. So. Well, it was it was fantastic. Veronica was Corningstone yeah. is quite a serious journalist. Yes, she's very ambitious, and yet she's coming into local TV news at a time where, as I mentioned earlier, they wanted the broads out of broadcasting. Let's face mm -hmm. it, Christina. Yeah, they they did. In fact, I was working with a cameraman recently who said to me, "Yeah, I, w I was working back then, and uh, there w what we used to say was there are no broads in broadcasting." Okay, <laughs> you could tell that he was still kind of upset about it. You know. <laughs> 30 some odd years later. We need to tell but, him to get with the program, but it really was true. You know, we did a piece on the Civil Rights Act uh, uh, about an hour ago, and I was thinking it's so hard to believe that that was just 40 years ago, but just yeah. 30 plus years ago, women were really uh, treated poorly. A mm -hmm. lot of men thought harass was two words, not one. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> basically, good, okay. so thank you very much. <laughs> and, and, and you are dealing with that in the newsroom in a very comedic way. But you were born, Christina, in 1971. So yeah. how did you find out what it was like, not only in the workplace, but in local news back in that I was I was really fortunate that Adam McKay and Will had done s such extensive research on this time. And of course, we're sending happy thoughts Christina's way as she celebrates the Big Five-O. There you go. That was your pre-holiday pop star plus. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. It's the midweek edition of Today in 30 on our favorite streaming channel, Today All Day. We have packed a lot into this next half hour to help you get ready for Thanksgiving. We'll have a full report on the busy holiday travel rush, what you can expect on the roads and at the airports, and then Al's got that really important forecast. Yeah, and it's looking pretty good. If you are stressing out about any last minute meal preps, we got that covered too. Some of the best chefs around are gonna share delicious and easy tips and tricks, substitutions, what if you're in a pinch, what All do you do? That. By the way, Jenna and Bono had an incredible conversation about his music and a whole bunch of other stuff, but there was an epic surprise that Bono had for Jenna on the eve of her she's, birthday. She's going to be telling her grandchildren mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. It's all when we get started on Today Day in 30. 30. First up. NBC's Morgan Chesky, he's in Dallas with the latest on the roads. Hey Morgan, good morning. Hey Savannah Hoda, good morning. And if you wanted the one, one of the millions of Americans heading the roads, you got a couple unfortunate realities today. Number one, packed highways. Number two, higher prices at the pump. Believe it or not, the average cost for a gallon of gas, now $1.30 more than what we were paying this time last year. And now President Biden tapping into our nation's fuel reserves to hopefully drive that cost down. Another Thanksgiving tradition is in full swing this morning. The traffic crush on the nation's roads and highways. More than 48 million Americans are expected to travel by car this week, according to AAA. That's up nearly 4 million since last year and approaching pre-pandemic levels in 2019. The holiday rush comes amid a surge in gas prices, now at their highest level in seven years, with the national average cost of a gallon of gas at $3.40. The highest prices in the Northeast and West, all of it leaving drivers frustrated. It almost makes me feel like I've got to go to the bank and take out a loan to pay for my gas. They are really high, you know, and what can we do? Hoping to relieve that pressure at the pump, President Biden announced the U.S. will tap into the nation's strategic petroleum reserve, releasing 50 million barrels of crude, part of a coordinated effort by the U.S. and five other countries. It will take time, but before long, you should see the price of gas drop where you fill up your tank. Experts warn it may take up to two weeks for prices to finally come down, but others doubt the government's move will have much of an impact. I don't think it's going to bring meaningful relief to Americans. It will bring some amount of relief, maybe to the tune of five to 15 cents a gallon nationally. And if you are hitting the road today, AAA says there is a bit of strategy to it. They say the most congestion will happen between noon and 8 p.m. today. So if you have a later departure, that would be best. If you're traveling tomorrow, they say try to hit the road before 11 a.m. if you want to avoid some of that congestion. We'll send it back to you. All right. Good advice, Morgan. Thank you. All right. Let's turn from the roadways to the runways and what you'll face if you're flying to your holiday destination. For that, we turn to NBC's Tom Costello. He's in Tampa at the International Airport there. Hey, Tom, good morning. 
Yeah, good morning. So this is the check-in for United Airlines. The lines have been building all morning. Let me do a quick pivot just to show you. You know, Tampa's not the busiest airport in the country. They are busy this morning. The lines have been building all day. The cars pouring in throughout the day. And now just a peek inside to see the terminal. And yeah, the lines are thick on both this side of the airport and the American side of the airport. You know, we can tell you that we checked the FAA's website. We checked with FlightAware. Perfect day for flying. Minimal cancellations. The airlines say this coming Sunday will be the Super Bowl for them. Massive crowds. This, these are the playoffs. If you're on your way to an airport, this is what you can expect. Millions of people eager to reunite with friends and families. What a difference a year makes. This was the Thanksgiving travel rush of 2020 before the vaccine. And this is Thanksgiving 2021. It's a busy day. Three kids, a lot of luggage, car seats, busy airport, but it's going. It'll be good to see family. I haven't traveled much, so it's good. So far, the TSA says it's screening 2 million passengers and more each day, a pandemic record. TSA Chief David Pekoski. Very close to 2019 uh, pre-pandemic levels. The busiest day uh, uh, by far uh, will be this coming Sunday, generally in the afternoon as people are returning home. With the crush of passengers, patients can be in short supply, tempers hot. This year has already brought a record number of onboard disturbances and assaults. So the airport's kind of an emotional place. Some people are running late, some people are delayed. You have people who are uh, getting ready to leave loved ones for a while, and they kind of tend to act out when things don't go their way. Onboard disturbances and violence can mean steep fines, jail time, and getting banned for life by that airline. But the CEO of United tells Savannah he supports banning those misbehaving passengers from all airlines. A lot of flight attendants unions support yeah. the idea of the airlines sharing with each other their lists of red flag passengers or potentially disruptive passengers. Would you support that? We absolutely support that. We need uh, the government to authorize us to share those passenger lists, but if they did, uh, we would absolutely share it and be supportive of that. Mm -hmm. right. Meanwhile, on this Thanksgiving Eve, from TSA and gate agents preparing for flight, in the thick of a stressful season, so the TSA's message to those on aviation's front ground. lines. We are so very thankful to have you around. Yeah, we're all thankful, really, because these people have been having a really tough year. Speaking of which, mass cancellations, as you know, we saw that over the summer into September, into October. So far today, it's going really, really well. The heaviest day ever? That was in 2019, Sunday after Thanksgiving. Nearly 3 million people traveling by air. It's unlikely we're going to have that many, but it's going to be a very busy Sunday. Guys, back to you. All right. Tom Costello for us there in Tampa. Tom, thanks. Well, as we well know, the mm -hmm. X factor is the weather. Uh, let's go to Al. Things actually look pretty good. Well, the, the truth is out here, right here on our map. I-35, I-80, I-10, I-95, I-5, I-94, all looking pretty darn good for today. Some snow in the rocky showers at night in the plains, sunny and chilly in the northeast and in the mid-Atlantic states. On the map for today, airports, maybe a few delays in Detroit, Chicago, Minneapolis, Salt Lake, and Denver. Otherwise, we got plenty of green. We look for tomorrow morning. Baby Grogu, 9 a.m. to noon, the parade. Looking good, sunny skies. Temperatures in the upper 40s. For Thanksgiving Day, some snow showers. Great Lakes, Santa Ana winds out west. Some wet weather from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf with heavy rain. Friday, some lake effect snow. Sunny and pleasant through the plains. A little wet weather moves into the Pacific Northwest. On Saturday, more snow showers around the Great Lakes. Above average highs out west. Coast rain in the Pacific Northwest, and then as we look ahead to Sunday, near record highs out west, a quiet weather pattern, so for air travel, things pretty good, maybe a little delay in Detroit, otherwise look at all the green on the map, and the roads will be pretty decent as well, guys, so we don't think weather will be something that you're not giving thanks for. Back to you guys. All right, Al. Thank, Thank you. you. Stick around, because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. 
Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, and just this. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Oh, that song. Welcome back. There are only a few names that rise to the top when you talk about true rock stars. Bono, undoubtedly. <laughs> when you go by one name, yeah, right? Yeah. The lead singer of U2 is behind some of the most famous and memorable songs across several generations, and now Bono is lending that iconic voice mm. to the upcoming animated film Sing 2. Jenna, you got to spend the day with your bestie Bono. Oh, I, I got can't to believe spend this. the day with him. I couldn't believe it. I hadn't seen Bono in quite some time, so it was so good to catch up with him, talk about his first acting role, what U2 has been working on, and what music truly means to him. It's an unmistakable voice behind some of the most iconic rock songs of all time. From U2's Beautiful Day to With or Without You and One, Bono has created anthems for generations. I just come to talk to you. <laughs> You know, I'm just so happy to be out, actually. And that, I know, and so you were closed up, and you're here in New York first time since the pandemic. What does it feel to be back? What does it feel like? It's just, it's, it's great um, to be outdoors. It's great to be with you. It's great to be discussing my acting. Bono, who is known for his epic concert tours and also his activism, is now trying something new. For the very first time, he's taking on a big film role in Sing 2, playing a world-famous musician who has shut out the world. I haven't even heard one of my songs in over 15 years, and for good reason. The upcoming movie giving us a brand new track from U2, the band's first in three years. Your song saved my life. Your song saved my life, shining a light on nonprofit group education through music an organization that provides music as a core subject for over 60,000 students across the country. It's a beautiful song, and the video made me weep. Um, because you're not starring in the video, it's real kids whose lives were changed because of music. Yeah. But they're real stories. You know, their lives depend on music. See, I can feel that from a singer. There are great professional singers out there. I'm not interested in them. Some people sing for a living, some people sing to survive. I, I am one of the, the latter. The new track inspired by Bono's own past. A kid growing up in Ireland, struggling with his own fears and insecurities. Bono says music helped save his life. I'm one of the people who sings to stay alive rather than for a living. There's a part of me that would die without that form of expression because as somebody said, you know, as a performer, insecurity is your best security. Any, any great performer is lacking something. You know, there's a void you're trying to fill. It's been four years since U2's album Songs of Experience and fans want to know if there's new music on the horizon. It's sometimes nice to write without a purpose which is to say, it's not like somebody's coming up going, we have to have a U2 album, and you know, we have to have a U2 tour. We, we, we've been talking and excited to work together again, and, and there'll be, yeah, in the next few weeks, um, there'll be some, some recording. But in between writing music, Bono's work to save lives continues with RED, the organization he founded to combat the AIDS pandemic 
And in the face of COVID-19, Red's focus has shifted. The problem with the coronavirus, as you know, is actually, if we don't cooperate on that one, worldwide, we haven't a chance. Because unless you defeat the virus everywhere, nobody's safe anywhere. This global icon with a giant voice and an even bigger heart had a special surprise in store, and I never saw it coming. As we walked through Central Park together, things took a turn. Can we get a pint? Could we get a pint? Sorry, change of plans. <laughs> oh, wait, what is happening here? Intentional music. Bono had evidently found out about my 40th birthday this week. What is this? Happy birthday, man. Stop it! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Over the top singer. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me! Thank you, sir. Thank you, I'm freaking out! Happy birthday. One of the world's biggest stars, creating an incredible memory and a truly beautiful day. me? Man. You I'm are alive. here. I could not believe it. Bono <laughs> planned this whole thing with Karen Trossett, who works with us. Yeah. Who I was thinking, I was with Karen Trossett for my 30th birthday. We'd gone to Africa to uh, do some reporting. Uh, That's how long I've been here. Yeah. I didn't even believe it. But I just want to thank Bono, his team. I, I, I can't even talk. And then we want to thank Tavern on the Green for helping uh, out with that awesome surprise in the Susan E. Wagner High School band who played Beautiful Day. He said he was going to play Happy Birthday, but he wanted the royalties. <laughs> nice. Nice. I mean, he made my decade. Wait. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just needs to. Is it easier to pass a bipartisan bill right now than it is to pass a Democrats-only bill? This supply chain issue has been a problem for months. Do you concur that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Are you concerned about the direction of your party? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. All right, earlier this morning, 21 chefs entered the Today Plaza to celebrate being together again in 2021. Well, three of those chefs are joining us now to share their top last minute tips and hacks so we can have our best Thanksgiving ever. First up, chef and owner of Pink Beach, our friend, Mr. Matt Abdu. Matt, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. Roker. All right, so what if you can't get your hand on a turkey? A lot, of, some people wait till the last minute. Myself, I wouldn't be that disappointed. What, uh, what would you suggest 
in its stead. Well, there's tons of options you can do, but I love doing a roasted chicken. If you couldn't get a turkey or there's not that many people coming over this year, want to do something uh -huh. a little bit smaller, go right. find yourself a chicken, roast it in the oven. Everybody loves a good roasted chicken. You can never go wrong with it. Okay, now, so, so say you, you've got the, you got your roasting pan here, but you don't have, what can you do as a hack to keep things, keep it elevated? So if you're cooking at home and you don't have one of these fancy, beautiful roasting pans, but you have some sort of baking dish or baking tray or whatever, um, we just take some aluminum foil and you uh -huh. just want to take it and twist it up and you'll make a oh, wow. little rack that you can put oh. your chicken or your turkey okay. right onto so all the juices will drip down. Uh -huh. And then you have room to put all of your carrots, onions, and celery on the bottom oh, of it. Oh, nice. So that when you're roasting your chicken or your turkey, it's nice and propped up so all those juices can drip down really well. And what about a brine for your uh, a dry brine or a wet brine? So no matter what you're, you're cooking, turkey, chicken, pork, you want to make a brine for it. It's going to add so much moisture and flavor to it. Super simple ratio. We have, for every quart of water, you have about a quarter cup of sugar and a uh -huh. quarter cup of salt. You just dump all those into the bowl and right. you whisk them all together until they're nice, until the solution is clear. And then you want to soak your turkey in that brine for an hour per pound to overnight. Mm -hmm. And then add some fun aromatics. Here we have some bay leaf, peppercorn, some thyme. Put all that in there. You add some garlic, shallots, whatever you want. Make it taste really great and uh -huh. your brine is ready to go. Do you like the dry brine? I love doing a dry brine. For a turkey though, I like doing the wet brine. I like it to be so, totally submersed into that. But the dry brine is great for like steaks or like pieces of chicken thighs or legs and things like that. Okay, for now, me personally. now for my favorite part, the stuffing. <laughs> all right, Marcel, what do we have? All right, so what do you guys do if you're out of breadcrumbs? Uh -huh. Supply chain issues, am I right? Sure. Okay, you guys can just use a little bit of soaked bread or box stuffing. And nothing's wrong with a box stuffing. Nope. It's on you the just grocery store shelves a little bit. Reason. I want to add in some thyme, some cilantro, a little bit of sazon because I'm Latin and that's how we do. <laughs> then, you know, if you have some gluten-free guests, mm -hmm. you can have them make their stuffing or you could provide oatmeal, rice. Really? Instant potato flakes and chicharron. Okay. Pork rinds because oh, pork rinds. chicharrons, of course. That's yeah. how we do. Now, I, I got something for you. Okay. If What's the worst thing that can happen with your stuffing? Uh, you run out of it. <laughs> or it gets mushy. It gets oh, mushy. Oh, you get mushy. Get like, you know what, can I tell you something? My much kids liquid. just said that yesterday. They, they think Thanksgiving food is mushy. Oh. Exactly. I'm like, guys. Maybe it's just... No, I don't cook, don't even. <laughs> they just don't like soft stuff. Maybe it's a shit. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't cook. Well, <laughs> I, got a, I got a solution for y'all. Okay. I call this stuffings. Stuffing. Stuffings. Stuffing muffins. Okay. All right. So basically what you do is you're going to get a muffin tin, uh -huh. and you're gonna grab your favorite stuffing. It can be boxed, it can be homemade, and you're gonna put That's them. That's a cute idea. Oh. Yes. And you know what it does? Stuffing muffin. It creates crispiness while retaining moisture, but also speeds up that cooking stuffings. process. Stuffing. Yeah. Stuffing. Wow. And clean up. That's Impressive. Good. Very easy. We got a stuffing here for all y'all. You very know nice. what? I have to say, it's very hard to do new things or for us to see new things on the show. That's new for me. Well, thank you. All right. I'll try it out. <laughs> well, now we have son of a Southern chef himself, Lazarus. What are you going to bring us this morning? Okay, so if you're having a wet Thanksgiving, which I plan to do. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. There will be bottles, there will be wine, yes, there will be something yes. to drink. But then sometimes we have leftover wine. Yeah. So what do you do with that wine? I love to make a next day sangria. Oh, let's do it. Come on, All let right. me put my stuff down. Okay, so, so you pour your leftover wine in here. Okay. Right? You have some cranberries, you got oranges, you got some fresh mint and rosemary. Put it into your pitcher. Isn't this gorgeous? It's beautiful. Now, I and might even just the home. presentation of it. I feel like your guests will feel like, you know nice. what I mean. It's really I great it? for like uh -huh. the next day. It's light, refreshing. You can add well, your good. little sparkling water. Yeah. Lovely. Just like that. Easy and then peasy. pour it right in. Ooh, that's good. We only have one minute left. Ah! All right, let's squeeze this in. Okay, so. You got leftover wine, you got oh, leftover so. cranberry sauce. Okay. Why not make a glaze? Oh. Okay, so you can pour that in. Now, we're using pantry ingredients. Okay. We've got some nutmeg, some cinnamon, oh, well, thank you, a little bit of here. allspice. Yes. Bring it into a pot, right? Wait, Bring it down to, one, reduce it to a simmer. Okay. All right, save one for me, y'all. Yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can pour it on your leftover meats. Ooh. You can put it on your leftover stuffing or your muffins. This would be muffins. great for, for the, the sandwiches the next day. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. oh my exactly. gosh. Yum. This is delicious. You guys all get this. new oh things my goodness. today. This is good. Cheers. Cheers. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Marisol and Lazarus, thank you so much, yes. guys. You can find <laughs> all of these this morning's Thanksgiving recipes, tips, and hacks on today.com slash food. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime, 
and streaming live. It's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. I cannot believe Jenna's turning 40. She's so young and she's so vibrant. I think Jenna will forever be 25 in her heart. You know what? This is awesome. 40 is awesome. And we're just getting started. Turning 40 was great. <laughs> Life has only gotten better since I turned 40. Best piece of advice I could give Jenna is, you know, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. But guess what? You're going to make mistakes in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s. Just try not to make the same mistakes. <laughs> I just think being in your 40s, you just have a better sense about who you are and what matters to you. Jenna, my only advice to you as you turn 40 is not to change a thing. I want you to just turn up <laughs> all the things people love about you, because there are a lot of them. Well, I would just say as somebody who's um, at the tail end of their 40s, to enjoy it, because it does fly. Every decade goes quicker than the one before it. My advice to GBH as she turns 40, keep doing what you're doing. It seems to be going well for you. It seems to be going really well for you. I mean, you got an entire country reading again, for God's sakes. And you're only 40. At the end of the day, it's a blessing to be here. So you know what? Bring on 40. Jenna, just want to wish you a happy 40th birthday. Happy 40th birthday, Jenna. Happy 40th, Jenna. Welcome to the 40 Club, my friend. Jenna, I love you so much. I hope you're eating some queso and some chips. <laughs> JBH, happy 40th. You wear it very well, my friend. 40 years old. It's the best. Welcome. Oh, oh my oh. God. This has been a day, hasn't it's it? It's been a day. I know. And don't you love that all of your, your family here, your family yes. here, your family yes. from this place, yes. everybody came together to wish you a happy 40th. It feels okay? It feels really happy good. Happy birthday Wait, who's that? to you. Is that? Is that? Happy birthday. Mickey Guyton. To you. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> To you, Jenna. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to Texas native. Oh, I'm My shaking, neighbor. and I'm, I need Kleenexes. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? Oh, we need Kleenex. Oh you my gosh! Cry. I love you guys. The fact that you are here, I'm dead. No, I'm really dead. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is Mickey Guyton. Yo, Mickey, oh, this, this is, is Maria. Maria. These are my friends, Hi. Maria. Hi, Mickey. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, and this is her friend. This Maria. is Maria Pop. She used to be one of Jenna's students when Jenna taught elementary school, wow. and now she's a teacher in the same school oh where Jenna God. Mickey, your baby is in the hospital, and you're here. Is your baby okay? He's okay. Is he got out? Yeah. He's okay. He's okay. Okay. He's okay. okay. He's okay. Yes. okay. We, yes, he's okay. I've been thinking and praying terrifying. for you. Thank y'all. We love Thank you, Mickey. For the you prayers, brought me a truly. cake no. and champagne in the morning. And you just got a Grammy <laughs> nom. No, she got three. Three. <laughs> three. And you came here? Mickey, by the way, 
I, Mickey, to my Crawford, Texas sister. I am absolutely. shaking. I am shaking, Happy and birthday. I'm del just delighted. <laughs> Jenna is really, really shaking. And Mickey, you guys, she's going to be performing at the Macy's Parade. Yes, she's yes. going to be performing at the tree lighting. Yes. You've got a new record out. Yes. And you're and nominated you're nom for three, three times. times. <laughs> I mean, this is really kind of your year. I mean, it is Jenna's year. <laughs> It's your it's year. It's been a beautiful year for it you so far. It has been so a beautiful Tell us. year. Yeah. It's been crazy. I still haven't really been able to process everything because my son was really sick. So I'm still like, oh, wow. You and I'm so happy to just be here and celebrate isn't it, your birthday. Uh, isn't Mickey, there something about Jenna? No, Mickey, about Jenna. Mickey, can we go oh, back to Mickey? Because when you were on our show, yeah. I think it was this summer, yes. Hoda and I, you took our breath away. No, oh we, we, we were sobbing listening to you. We've been oh fans God. of yours yeah. in a major way. There's <laughs> nobody else so that could have surprised me with oh besides, you know, all of these people. <laughs> <laughs> what it meant so much. We are so crazy about you oh and just God. delighted. I just love you guys. Well, so we three Grammy Grammys. She's still. Oh, I found out on the plane. I was like, on Is the plane. Is that what you found out? Yes. On the way here. I was on the plane. I was like silently screaming and sobbing under my mask. And it's well, Grayson's first Christmas. Yes. What are you guys going to do? How are you going to celebrate? Well, once he's, you know, all the yeah. way better, like I really want to put up a Christmas tree. And <gasps> there's like, you know, the toy store right across the <gasps> way. So it's I need to you. go over there and get, get Grayson some gifts, even guys, though he guys, likes to play with household objects. Can we pick up a, a glass of champagne? Yes. Can we bring? Our staff here. Will you guys come, please? Yeah, come, cake. Come. Talia, come. Come, Sid. Come, Donna. Donna. Come, Gab Gavin. Face Carrie. Come, Carrie. This is the beautiful Sydney. staff, Sid. Yeah. Come, guys. We love you, Jenna. You guys, everybody, let's raise a glass to Jenna Bush Jenny, Hager. Thank you for being born. Mickey. Yes. <laughs> celebrating 40 Cheers glorious you. years. Thank you to Cheers. everybody who came to celebrate oh, you. Jenna, I mean, I know you know you're really loved, but today now. is you're living proof. Yourself. Happy 40th, my darling. We love you to the moon. And I think there's one last present. Do we have that? Hold on, one last present. No, no. We have a second. It's hilarious. You've got to have okay. it. We need to end on this. Oh. <laughs> we love you. Literally. Oh. So cute. Here's to Jenna, guys. Cheers. Cheers. And that's today in 30. We don't need any prompter. No, prompter schmompter. I didn't even know there was a prompter. I was out of thing. <laughs> you memorized it. Goodbye. Have a great Have day. Have a great Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? Not from you. <laughs> How are you? Good, nice to see you. I mean, this day in this garden is just for you. How beautiful is it up here? Incredible. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on. Let's talk Legos. Legos. <laughs> Legos. <laughs> Was that hello, like, sounded deep enough for it to be bell and button talk or not really? You have to kind of bring it down from here. Okay. You have to hello. go. Hello. No, no, no. Not, <laughs> your hand. Hello. hello. And then you go up high. Oh, okay. You start low and go up. Hello. Hi. Yeah. No. No. Hey. Hello. 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 <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's just a stupid thing. Well, I'm sure it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me, is it? No. Not at all. No, me. All right. You know this girl, Claire, I'm seeing? Yeah. Well, he and I started joking that when she falls asleep, her stomach stays awake all night and talks to me. How's it talking? Well, the belly button's like a mouth. I'm bored. <laughs> OK, so you've played a lot of different Jerry's. Do you know what I mean? You've had the big puffy sleeve Jerry. Yes, I've, on the Today Show. Yes. We debuted the puffy shirt on the Today Show with Brian Gumbel. That is a very, very unusual shirt you have on. <laughs> you know, yeah. They're all kind of, kind of puffed up. Yeah, it's a puffy shirt. <laughs> you look kind of like a pirate. <laughs> yeah, like a pirate. Anyway, uh, you know, we're hoping to um, raise enough money with, the, you know, you know, with this. <laughs> look, I'm sorry. It is just a very unusual shirt. It could be kind of a whole new look for you. You know, you could put a, a patch over an eye. You could kind of, like, be the pirate comedian. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've yeah. had some iconic looks. Yeah. What made you think, okay, it's time naturally to be a Lego, Jerry? Well, who doesn't want to be a Lego?
It's Lego Seinfeld. He's blocky. He's stoppy. He has sea hands. What are we selling here? <laughs> Lego, the reason people love Lego is because they it clicks together. And once it clicks, it fits. It's tight. And it makes sense. Yes. And the world doesn't make sense. But Lego, you can, you can order the universe with Lego. You can make sense of something. Yeah. If you follow the instructions and you complete the model, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I have three little kids. Have you ever stepped on a Lego in the middle of the night? It's painful, yeah. It's not a great thing. You're no. right that they make sense. There's, there's moments where you want to throw them, though. Yeah. Does that, is fun that, to throw, too. Is that sort of makes is that sort of you you know they're, they're like jerry and you make sense but there's moments where you're like no, that i've work. never stepped on a lego <laughs> but that does seem like a killer okay in this short you say but i don't want to be a lego <laughs> right but you actually wanted to be a lego you, this was I your did, idea yeah how what was the genesis uh the genesis was lego made a model of my tv show set and netflix bought the tv show and wanted to do a promo, and I went, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why can't I be a Lego? And then I, and then I really wanted to do the line again. I don't want to be a pirate. But I, yeah, but I don't want to be a Lego. But I don't want to be a Lego. I know. I, somehow that, that is a hard octave to match. You know, there's a whininess to that that's really hard to do. It's, these are some of the little subtle things of comedy that are very important. So what did your wife and kids think when you told them you were turning into? They loved it. I got the idea from my son who was wanted to build his last Lego. He's 16. He, thinks, he said, you know, I think I got one more Lego left in me. <laughs> one more. I go, why don't you do the set from my TV show? We were walking along and I went, oh, that's the promo. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make Netflix shrink me down. <laughs> shrink you down and pour actual Lego cereal yes. into your mouth. There, you, the set is incredible. It's exactly like it's your amazing. set. amazing. Tell me some of the details you love. I, I love the couch and I love the refrigerator and the stove. And I love wearing the costume. Some of those bits, like you know when I skate out in the yes. end, that took an hour and a half oh. of moving an inch at a time. And when I sit down on the couch, that took an hour and a half. The stop motion it's not done with humans. Yeah. It's done with props. You know, the last person to do it was Peter Gabriel Sledgehammer. Oh, really? Yes. Humans don't do stop motion. We do it with toys and props. <laughs> you don't ask a person to do this. And now this. And now this, you know. But the fact that, so first of all, somebody told me about this and I thought like, no, no, he, Jerry Seinfeld's not becoming a Lego. <laughs> And then they told me you shot it last week. Yeah, last week. So how much fun was it? There was a lot of laughter. It was insane. <laughs> we, it was just this crazy, everybody. We had to hire an animation company to do the stop motion because I wanted it to be stop motion. And then to build that set, it was all custom made out of foam and then paint and then the plastic finish to make it shiny. I mean, we worked so hard on it. It was so much fun. I bet it was. Yeah. So the amazing Brian Cranston, who is a Tony winner, an Emmy winner, yeah. Oscar nominated. Yeah. You call him on the phone and you're like, hey, you want to be a Lego? He's not a well, Lego. Well, he's an announcer. He's an announcer. Coming this fall to Netflix. 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 Net 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 <laughs> Seinfeld. 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 You call him on the phone and say, want to be in a Lego short? Yeah. And his response was? Love to. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But I trust you. That's what he said. <laughs> did you notice the little dentist chair at the end? I sure did. That's was the that little, a nod uh, to him? I think that's a cookie, what we call a cookie. <laughs> a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I thought maybe that would have been a stranger conversation, but it was just pretty basic. Want to be in a Lego short? Let's if, do it. If you're a comedy person, which Brian is, even though he's done a lot of yes. drama, and someone gives you a crazy idea, you go, yeah, that sounds crazy. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Let's go. 
You think you'll run for office one of these days? I'm not saying no to anything. Wow. Welcome to Football Fright in America. That was amazing. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. So the last couple years, people have been at home on their couches. Right. Is this, is there like a lot of creativity spurring up in you? Is that why things like this are happening or not really? Maybe, I didn't think about that, but maybe. I, I personally have a, a, feel like I really need to have some fun. I really need to make fun things for people. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do this. I like, go, oh, this is just fun and silly. And I don't see enough of that. Yeah. I like that. It, does, it will make people laugh for yeah. sure. So Netflix has picked up all of these episodes. Yes. Do you think the world's ready? I don't know. <laughs> they weren't when we started back in 89, that's for sure. It took a number of years before people said, what are, what are they talking about? How do they talk? I know, that's kind of interesting. So it didn't catch on right away? No, it took four years. The first four years of the show, it was Poorly received, very poorly received. That's forgotten now. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so how did you all have the patience just to wait it through? Well, um, in those days on television, if you got a good demo, yeah. uh, the advertisers wanted to be on your show. So even though we were not good, <laughs> we got a certain audience that was buying like BMWs. So that kept us on the air. Um, I, tell me about being a Lego, the, transforming. It did not look comfortable, I have to tell you. It was okay. I, I was fine with it. I just wanted to be it so bad. <laughs> I wanted to be in the toy. Seems like, you know, so if, it you did bought, it... if you bought that toy yeah, and you could get me shrunk yes. in it, wouldn't that be the ultimate? I'd be very into having you as a Lego, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I, I was worried about you because it looked like oh. there was a little bit of a wedgie in this area. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah there's lots of- Just issues. between you and me, we want, there was a there a little issues, wedgie? A lot of issues below the waist. It looked yeah. like it. Yeah. I mean, that, that round area, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay. Um, I loved Netflix's press release. It was brilliant. Did you read it? The new show thing? Yeah. Yeah. It said Netflix will launch 180 episodes of a situational comedy called Seinfeld, created by rising New York comedian Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, who wrote for Saturday Night Live for a single season. That's right. So how did you feel about, I mean, the fact that they would take a chance on a young New Yorker just like you, did that feel good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did. And to make that many shows, not knowing. If anyone was going to like it, it was quite a gamble. It really yeah. was. Thank you, Netflix. Yeah. Sitting here with this beautiful view in Rockefeller Center, New York's been through a lot. Yes. You wrote a really beautiful article that I feel like everybody posted online. Um, what does it feel like to be here on this day, beautiful fall day in a city that you love so much? I am uh, humbly uh, proud of uh, that I stuck up for my town. Yeah. I, I just love this town. And, you know, I, I know, I grew up you know, all around here, so you, you know the people, you know what they're made of. You know, you, you're, not, you're not getting rid of this. There is nothing like this anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a resilience. To yes, it, right? yes. And on a day like this, there's nowhere better to be. No, no, it has a, New York on a beautiful day is really magical. It really is. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm just wondering, as a Lego, could, could Elaine do her dance? Like, what would that look like? It would be like? a lot of clicking. 
yeah. cracking. Kind yeah. of like in, in the knee area. Yeah, the, some of the plastic might crack. Now, does a Lego have a belly button? No, no, so, just I mean, shirt buttons. How would you talk from your belly button? That'd be a really hard thing. Well, we're not going to do the whole series. <laughs> I, have, okay, I have to tell not. you the truth. <laughs> It was really just a joke. Oh, you're not doing, I no. thought you were doing the whole series as a Lego. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the way it looks, but no, we couldn't do it. <laughs> Too expensive, right? Yeah, yeah. These days. Today is getting you ready for the holiday season. From how to get your orders on time. The race to prepare for a holiday shipping season like no other. To traveling shortcuts and safety essentials. What you need to know every morning on Today. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man All right, it just fits. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just been The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Cooking up a storm with Al Roker, a Thanksgiving feast and a podcast. Listen now. The biggest grievance of 2021 so far. And you don't have to have one if you don't want one. But oh, I've got one? tons. <laughs> um, sounds like a plan. That's because it is a plan. That's what the sound was. Just tell me what time you want to meet. Stop saying the thing sounds like a plan. <laughs> you know what? Actually, Hoda and I, are, and, and actually Savannah, we're in a fight over the word literally because we think oh, it's overused. Way overused. Are you on my side? Totally. They're like, totally well, literally, too, it's, the literally it's freezing out here. I'm yeah. like, no, it's just cold. It's just freezing. If it was literally freezing, yeah. you would have frostbite. That's right. Okay, so you want to tell Hoda that you're on my side? I'm on Jenna's side, Hoda. Stop with the literally. Thank you. It's not a book to begin with. <laughs> yeah, if we want to talk literal, yeah. let's go to talk Jane Austen. You yeah. know what I mean? You go away from New York for a couple months. What's the first thing you do when you come back? Just walk. A walk in New York is like reading a novel. The, you see snippets. Of, you know, I love that people yap on the phone out loud. <laughs> I love hearing half a conversation. I you do know? too. I, it's fun, right? I yeah. don't find it annoying. No, I, really I don't like find it. it annoying. In fact, when we go to restaurants, I'm like, honey, they're getting divorced. He's like, can you pay attention to me? Yeah. It's hard not to. Musical artist that you listen to that would surprise some people. Do you like music? I love music. That would surprise some people. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would surprise them. I really love John Denver. That's not a surprise. I, don't I think. love uh, America. I love the band America. I, and I really love uh, Malo, who they had a song called Suavecito, which is my favorite song. <laughs> is it really? Suavecito. Can you sing a little bit of Suavecito mm. to me? La, 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 <laughs> la, la, la. Sound familiar? No. You know this song, Jenna, you know Suavecito? this song. Suavecito? You know Suavecito. You don't know that you know it. It's one of the greatest Latin Suavecito. Song. Yeah. Is that it? No. I'm thinking Despac Despacito. It's not Despacito. Do you know Despacito by yes. the Bieber? Despacito, no, no. es Suavecito. <laughs> okay, okay. It's um, diferente. So I felt like I needed to say, hello. Is that better? Right. 
Is it what? Was that better? Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Is that what's the number one Seinfeld line that people yell at you and when you're walking the streets? Um. They yell. Um, Where's Kramer? A lot. <laughs> I don't know why I'm expected to be with him at all times. They yell, "Where's Kramer?" <laughs> what do you say? I go, "He's not real." <laughs> He's not real. Um, uh, this is sort of a strange one, but last picture you took on your iPhone. I hope it, only if it's in a, if it's not appropriate. It's always, of course, I don't do anything okay. not appropriate. Okay. Good. The last picture I took. Well, it's a it's a small story. Okay, we've got the time as long okay. as you do. I like. I like, uh, I watch a lot of YouTube. I like funny uh, pet stuff. Yeah. And I saw I you do. a bulldog <laughs> riding a skateboard. Uh, and it was so cute, and I was so fascinated. And I just thought that they just showed how this bulldog, he just loves his skateboard. He loves it. And I go, that, that's, that explains so much of life right there. He just, he just loves it. And there's no reason why. No one will ever understand why. He loves that skateboard. So, Later on that day, I was walking from 69th and York to Columbus and 81st. And as I was getting up to Columbus on 81st, I saw a bulldog no. and a woman, same day, a woman carrying his skateboard. Was it the same bulldog? No. And did you take a picture yes. of it? Yes. And did you send it to your wife? No. Okay. I thought maybe you'd share it. I know she likes funny pet I videos too. I told the too. story. The picture wasn't great. <laughs> a little blurry. Yeah, but it was amazing. So I just have to go back to the fact that you like funny pet videos. Do you find comfort in them, humor, or what is it? I don't, uh, I don't really have a pet. I don't, I know. You we, do have a pet, I'm you not, have Javier. It's, I'm, I'm not, it's not, he, he and I have no real relationship. Wait, that's, your wife is gonna take real offense to this. No, it's her thing. You don't like cats? They're okay. But Javier is marrying my sister's cat. That's fine. You're not going to be at the wedding? I guess I will. <laughs> you don't really like a cat. I, I like that my wife enjoys it. OK. And when he gets lost, I go looking for him. Well, that, Javier does not go outside on the streets of New York, does he? No, but out, we have a house on Long okay. Island, and sometimes he will escape. OK, well, that's nice. So you yeah. do secretly love the cat. Okay, secretly. Okay, I thought Let's so. keep it a secret. All right, don't tell anybody. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! You want bread? Three dollars! No soup for you! How would I describe the soup Nazi? Is I just thought he was a very militant food vendor who, who didn't take crap from anybody and uh, ruled his, his soup station with an iron fist. And I, I even went into the original audition in an army uniform with a beret. So I looked like uh, Saddam Hussein. 
You're pushing your luck, little man. Sheila! Hey! Uh-oh. What is this? You're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line! My favorite line is the kissing line. And uh, I was doing a, a thing for Sony once called the Seinfeld Food Truck, where we were going to different locations. And for two hours, people would line up and get treats. And uh, I very seldom get the chance to say that line. And there was one couple in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who were brave enough to stand there and start making out in front of me. And I finally got to say, like, you're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line. The main thing is to keep the line moving. Okay, so you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So right. The step to the left part, it, it's, it's been made fun of so often. I've had people come up to me and like stand like that and step to the left. And uh, going to the actual real soup stand, I finally found out that the reason you step to the left is the menu board is to your right. So if you order and stay there, no one else could see the menu. So there actually is method to the madness. I actually say no soup for you a lot these days, but uh, in the first like three years after the episode, I refused to say it. I wouldn't say it for anybody. I, uh, when I was nominated for the Emmy, I had interviews with a, a few big TV shows and I refused to say it for them because I just thought I'd sound like a bad water cooler impression of myself out of context. And then when we shot the finale, um, the very first scene we shot was actually a silent scene at this bed and breakfast where I take Poppy's soup bowl away from him because he motions that he wants salt and pepper. <laughs> and uh, Jerry and Larry David decided that I should say No Soup For You out loud, even though you weren't going to hear it in the show, which absolutely terrorized me but I said it and as we walked away from that scene Larry David walked over to me and goes hey man you say it the same way you said it three years ago so ever since then it's like a knee jerk there was um, a lady named Marcia who was in the extra pool and they had built the soup stand a little longer than they planned so for me to go to the cash register and back to serve the soup was killing the timing of the lines. It was just taking too long. So they called this girl out from the extra pool because she looked like she would be working in, in my stand. And uh, her name was Marcia. And she, at a moment's notice, did that thing where she pulls the bag away from George and hands him the money back. It actually got uh, more laughs than anything I did. And to this day, when I see that scene over and over again, I laugh at her timing. The guy who runs a place is a little temperamental, especially about the ordering procedure. He's secretly referred to as the soup Nazi. <laughs> Working with that cast was just amazing. Jason Alexander was calling me La, which is the New York shortening of Larry. There's Lawrence, Larry, La, but that's New York. And he was calling me that within about an hour of me being on the set. Um, Julia was incredible because if I made her laugh, she would totally break up and she'd grab my hand and go, you're so funny. So they were so welcoming. But the most amazing story to me is Jerry himself because um, I've dealt with a lot of producers and directors in the world of theater, TV, film, everything. I've done some directing myself and I know what that's like. But I've never worked with um, a, a director and producer who had less ego than Jerry Seinfeld. Medium crab bisque. When I did the callback, I did the six scenes that the Soup Nazi has, and he laughed a lot. It was great. It was, he was laughing too much, actually. And then he had me do it again, and he said, you know, I don't understand why the character is so mean. Could you, you know, kind of do it again and give it some of this, be a little nicer sometimes, which I did horribly. I don't think he laughed once. And I thought for sure that was, you know, the death nail about the character. I wasn't going to get it. But I did get it. And as soon as I walked onto the soundstage, Jerry B. lined over to me and he said, you know what, man, forget about the direction I gave you. Just do what you did when you walked in. The meaner, the funnier, I guess. And I was just astounded by his lack of wanting to be right, which almost every other director and producer uh, has. I could go a long time without being recognized, but every once in a while, 
somebody will say to me, you know, has anybody ever told you you look like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld? And depending on if I have time to talk about it, you know, because sometimes I, like I'm in a rush or something, so I'll just say like, yeah, I get that a lot. And other times, you know, I, I get to go like, yeah, I was him. You know, and it's, it's always fun because Seinfeld fans uh, range from 13 years old to, to 83 years old, you know. A couple of times I've been somewhere, like on the subway or somewhere where it's crowded and people can't really see me. And I will actually hear somebody say to somebody else, you know, no soup for you. And I'm, I'm actually like, you know, 10 people away and they don't even know that I'm there, but I hear people say it. I actually wrote a book called Confessions of a Soup Nazi, an Adventure in Acting and Cooking, uh, which is part cookbook, part memoirs of, you know, 30, 40 years of being an actor. But the reason I wrote it is because I get so many people that come up to me and they go, you know, you were so great on Seinfeld. Did you ever do any other acting after that? So, uh, I, but I get all kinds of stuff. I get people that, that think I'm really Al Yegane and that's, you know, I, I was at your soup stand. I visited New York and I was at your soup stand and, you know, it was closed. When do you plan on reopening? And I have so much fun with going like, I'm, I'm an actor. It's not my soup stand. It's, you know. The funniest thing about how my life has changed after Seinfeld is I had no idea that the life I had was gone forever. Not a moment goes by in my life where it doesn't have something to do with having been the soup Nazi, really an hour goes by and something happens where that takes over my life again. So it's, it's a whole new existence. Where do I think the soup Nazi would be now? Well, then I have to pitch my idea for a spinoff because, see, I, I see a food court in Manhattan where the soup Nazi, Babu, and Poppy are all in a row with their prospective little stands and Jackie Childs comes in there every day for lunch and we vie for his business, of course. You know, whatever the storylines are about uh, or whatever actually the events that happen in every episode, it really boils down to the way people treat each other. You know, they didn't treat people very well. You got to admit that. I know people loved, you know, Jerry, George, Elaine and Kramer, but they were horrible. They treated people badly, and they always got their comeuppance for treating people badly. So I guess in the end, that's such a generational and universal, never-ending idea is you treat people a certain way and you get back the way, you know, it's like the golden rule, you know, you get back what you give. And that's really what the show is about in the end. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Oh, good morning. Welcome to this third hour of today, Wednesday, November 24th, T-minus 20.